Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. I am Trooper SJP, and this is the Academic Foxhole. Uh, how are you all doing? What are you all doing? I've got things going on, and I feel like I should tell you about them. Be Boodle Floof and Ice Bunny and Jer, Tivo, how are y'all doing? What does this say over here? Never check out the teachers on changed mandatory classes. Never check out the teachers on changed mandatory classes. What does that mean? You, you have no idea. Tivo, I have questions for you. I have a lot of questions, but I want to give you all the news. I have news. I have news. You're salty. You can be some salty sometimes. That's fine. So I want to give you news first. You know how I said that I was not going to be streaming on Saturday because I had to go to a Game of Thrones tournament? Remember when I said that? And I said that and it was true. Um, I am going to be streaming on Saturday because I'm not going to the Game of Thrones tournament. And that makes me sad, but let me tell you why. The reason why is also why I'm starting late today. And also why you have to forgive me if I'm strange. Um, I have I have news. Um, Gary Gnu. Gary Gnu. This is Gary Gnu reading the news. If you... Nobody. So here's what it is. So this here is a brace that I have to wear. Uh... 24-7, except when I'm in the shower, for the next two weeks. Yes, Jer, drugs is actually also related to this, to the thing. It is true. What I'm going to tell you is also about drugs. Jer knows. Jer understands. So, um, what is today? Today's Thursday, right? So Monday, I went to my regular doctor, who said you should go to the special hand doctor. So on Tuesday, I went to the special hand doctor and they said, you have this thing called um, extensor extensor tensosyngoitis. It's a thing where you have your um, extensor tendons, right? And um, for some reason, nobody knows why, there's a fluid buildup that happens, which makes it so you actually cannot use your extensors at all. So I have this thing and um, I was like, well, it's painful. What do I do about it? And yeah, it's something very complicated in Latin. And the doctor, she says to me, wear this brace for two weeks, don't take it off. And I was like, mm-hmm. And um, then she also says I have to take these drugs. And the drugs are anti-inflammatories. They're like a really powerful anti-inflammatory. I think they're also a painkiller, but they're like mainly a big anti-inflammatory and I have to take them twice a day with food. And this is my third time taking them and they make me super tired and a little loopy and a little... They make me a little tired, a little loopy, and sometimes I feel a little unsettled. It is a good thing, my Southpaw. I will tell you, it is a great thing, my Southpaw. So I've got these drugs on and, and this brace, and I'm not going to the Game of Thrones tournament on Saturday because I can't shuffle the cards. You're at a tournament. You've got to be able to shuffle your cards, you know? Uh, so that you can compete. And I can't shuffle cards effectively with this brace on. Also, I'm a little loopy. Um, uh, so, right? And so, you know, um, so I will be streaming Horizon Zero Dawn on Saturday. And I'm a little late today because I went to the... Uh, hey, Pumpkin! Welcome in! I'm a little late today starting because I went to the acupuncturist today to help with all that business. And uh, with a combination of the drugs and the acupuncturist meant that I needed to take a nap. And then I did take a nap. And then I woke up at six and I was like, oh, I've got to get ready for the stream. Uh, so I quickly ate some food, got everything set up. And here I am. So uh, here I am. I feel like I look a little bit um, disheveled 
but uh, but I am here. Uh, and they don't let you do it like a five-year-old? I don't know. What does that mean? So, hey, everyone. How are you? Um, there was a thing that TiVo uh, asked about in my Discord, and I just wanted to ask some follow-up questions here and now. Um, so TiVo, TiVo said that he wanted a love mechanic for his campaign in that he's running in GURPS. And I want to know what he means by a love mechanic. What do you mean by my mustache is drooping? So if you'll see me do this because my mustache is drooping right now. And it's, you know. Anyway, what do you mean by a love mechanic? Do you do you want sort of mind control? Do you want supernatural love abilities? Uh, do you want it to be like an attack? Uh, do you want it to be just your regular sex appeal role? Like what what do you want for this love mechanic? And uh Oh, oh, yeah, no. You can't shuffle like a five-year-old because that will not work for the tournament, I'm afraid. Uh, and the kind of, there's like a, a kind of a shuffle you do when your cards are um, sleeved. And that isn't the, the riffle shuffle, but I still can't do it with this hand because I can't, I can't move. I can't move. So Tivo, what do you want? Like, is it is it just like a, is it just a talking thing? Is it mind control? What's the what's the word? What's the word for love mechanics? Because you know. Oh, and Jer, I know what I want for the next next um emote. By love mechanics, I mean that I wanted a quantifiable way to see how much my NPCs are falling in love with my players. I realize now though that I don't really need that. Oh. Um There is in GURPS, in campaigns, a mechanic for loyalty for NPCs. No, I think that's for hirelings. Mm. Oh. Why do I have to try to do things with my right hand when that's the hand that's not working it well? Why do I do that? Ugh. Um. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't. I tried caffeine pills once, and I really didn't like it. It really made me very unhappy. One time when I was in the army. Uh, let me see. Hold on. It is loyalty, but these are for hirelings. So I think. You probably don't want this, but I mean, it's a thing. Loyalty, 518. So it's on 518. And you've got like loyalty checks uh, for, for hirelings and um, slaves. Hirelings and hirelings. So basically people that you are hiring, they have a loyalty mechanic. Um, which there's numbers right for your for your loyalty uh, so that is a thing that you could do you could use loyalty uh, but you could also besides loyalty which is i mean loyalty is for hirelings so you could adapt that the other thing you could do is um in the basic set they talk about um allies patrons dependents and there's a reliability score so like how reliable they are how available they are and you could use that as well i think also contacts has this sort of reliability uh score so if you're statting up npcs that way you could use reliability so i would say like i would say maybe adapt loyalty if you want sort of a love mechanic if you need it you may not need it though those would be my thoughts Right, so either reliability, which is in which is for allies, or loyalty, which is for hirelings. One of those two things could probably work. Um, I cannot make this a a GURP stream 
because Steve Jackson Games is not behaving well with regard to the Bill Webb situation. And so I don't think I can stream GURPS as long as they feel like they get more, yeah. They did not handle, yeah. They did not handle the situation with Bill Webb and Frog God Games well, and they were very dismissive of people's concerns. And uh, as long as that's their stance, I can't really, oh, I can't use this hand. No, I can't, I can use this hand. What? So basically, oh, what happened? So they are working with Frog God Games, which is owned, the CEO of which is Bill Webb, to make adventures for the fantasy trip. And Bill Webb was, had some scandal when at PaizoCon he was groping, he got drunk and was groping a woman, but apparently this is not the first time he does this. Uh, he apparently regularly gets drunk and gropes people. And um, it was a big to-do. Somebody got injured trying to pull him off her. It was like, you know, kind of this terrible thing. And he was disinvited from Gary Khan. It was like a whole, a whole thing. And somebody was like, hey, you're working with this creeper. And like, what's up with that? And there were many different ways in which they could have responded to that concern that I think would have been okay. They could have said, for example, um, we have contracts with Frog God Games. We cannot break those contracts. So we will, we will finish out the contracts that we have. We think that we don't think that anyone should be harassed at a convention. And I think if they'd done that, that would have been fine. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, some people might've been mad, but I would have, I understand that you cannot break contracts. You know what I mean? So like, I would have dealt with that. But instead what they said was, we get a lot of good things. Oh, ooh, the name game. Come on, everybody. I said, now let's play a game. I bet you I can make a rhyme out of anybody's name. The first letter of the name. I treat it like it wasn't there. And then a B or an F or an M will appear. And then I say boo at a B, then I say the name, then banana fan or info. And then I say the name again with an F, very plain, then a fee, fi and a mo. And then I say the name again with an M this time, and there isn't any name that I can't rhyme. Mm, 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 mm. Krellen, 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 Bobellen, Banana Fan, Fofelen, Fee, Fi, Momelen. Krellen. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you so much for making me your Twitch Prime subscription. It is very much appreciated. And I love melons. I have thoughts though about melons, <laughs> but I will finish those thoughts after I say the thing. Um, so what, what happened was that they said in their response that they get really good things out of working with Bill Webb and they don't want to punish the rest of the company, so they're not going to do anything about it. And if you don't like it, you can get your money back. And that was not a great way to handle concerns, I don't think. And yeah, don't get drunk in public, right? But I just basically thought, since they responded so poorly to that concern, as long as that is their current position, I am not going to stream any GURPS. And that, by the way, or give them money. Um, and that makes me super sad because I have so many game ideas that can really only be well realized through GURPS. And I just got a, a an email about playtesting some GURPS stuff. And like, it makes me very sad that they don't have good PR and they don't think about these things. That's all. So I just can't do it at the moment. Krellen, I want to, but to circle back to the, the melon, Krellen, I have a, a thought that I want to share with you and I want your feedback and everybody else's feedback as well. But I'm address, addressing it to you because I did the name game and your name came up, Melon. Oh no, I will, I will help anybody out. Do you know what I mean? Like I will help out people with GURPS um, all day long. 
It's just that I don't think I can stream it right now. So that's a that's a thing. And like and I hope that they're they will work this out in some kind of a way, I hope. So it's about melon, specifically honeydew versus cantaloupe. And my feeling my I think that a really good ripe honeydew is better than a ripe cantaloupe, but an unripe honeydew is worse than an unripe cantaloupe. So cantaloupe is like the safer choice if you have to choose between two melons, because it's a little bit more, what do you all think? <laughs> On the, because I'm thinking about when you get, you know, uh, melon mixed, mixed melons in a thing at the place, and it's like some, it's always, it's like, Mixed fruit, but the mixed fruit is always cantaloupe, honeydew, and like maybe a little bit of pineapple, but not much. Um, so, uh, uh, Ice Bunny, just get back on the wagon. Yeah, and the thing is, I I love a good honeydew, but I really dislike a bad honeydew. And like cantaloupe, I can like... Uh, pumpkin says cantaloupe is just better, period. I see how you are, Pumpkin. I see how you are. Mmm. It is possible because, I mean, I rarely get a ripe honeydew, to be honest. Rarely do I get a good honeydew. Most of the honeydews I get are not ripe. I think it's because they pick them so early. I think it's because they pick them when they're not ripe for shipping purposes, and then you get them and they're not ripe, and it's, like, not great. I can't get so much melons down, and at our water hole, they only add watermelon. A good watermelon is delish. Like, a good ripe watermelon? Mmm. How do I feel about unripe watermelon? Not great, but it's not the worst, you know? But they don't tend to put watermelon in those weird mixed fruit things. Uh -huh. uh, there was something else that I wanted to share with you all. Oh, so you know I'm reading all the fate stuff. And uh, I'm not done with the fate core rule book, but I'm getting there. And it's so interesting because I think that I'm just going to tick off a bunch of Fate fans. Ooh. Come on in my house, my house, come on. Come on in my house, my house, I'm gonna give you candy. Come on in my house, my house, I'm gonna give you everything. Thank you. Ooh, ooh! The name game. Come on, everybody. I said, now let's play a game. I bet you I can make a rhyme out of anybody's name. The first letter of the name, I treat it like it wasn't there. And then a B or an F or an M will appear. And then I say Bo at a B, then I say the name, then banana fan or info. And then I say the name again with an F, very plain, then a fee, fi and a mo. And then I say the name again with an M this time, and there isn't any name that I can rhyme. Mm, 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 mm. Demma, 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 bobemma, banana fan, a fofemma, fee, fi, mo, memma. Demma. Come on, everybody. I said, now let's play a game. I bet you I can make a rhyme out of anybody's name. The first letter of the name, I treat it like it wasn't there. And then a B or an F or an M will appear. And then I say, Bo at a B, then I say the name, then banana fan or info. And then I say the name again with an F, very plain, then a fee, fi and a mo. And then I say the name again with an M this time, and there isn't any name that I can rhyme. Mm, 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 mm. A neo, a neo, a neo, bo, ba neo, banana fan, a fo, fa neo, fi, fi, mo, ma neo. A Neo. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you both for the resubs. So excited. That's so great. Um, watermelon, pineapple, and grapes. Watermelon, pineapple, and grapes. That's a weird mixed fruit. Um, more singing forever. Look at all these people saving you from angering your fate fans. I know, right? That's what I, that's what it is. I, I gotta save from angering the fate fans. Hey, Demma and a Neo, welcome in. Um, what? Oh, you're heading out. Oh, I will see you later. 
uh, what are you going to do this weekend, Ice Bunny? So here's what I was thinking about Fate. So Fate is a game, as you all know. Uh, there was a number in there and it was important. Wait, wait, wait. There was a number. <laughs> I must have, did I, I miss a number? Wait, ah, Krellen, I'm on drugs right now, prescription drugs. So like, let me know if I miss something. Um, ah, singing forever, I don't, so the thing about fate is, since I totally lost my chain of, oh, angering the four fate fans, oh. <laughs> That was good. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the thing about Fate is that it looks really good and there are a lot of things I'm liking about it, but gosh, is there a lot of spirited fan opinion about Fate is what I think I will say. Um, in the sense that Fate, perhaps more so than, I mean, maybe not, but noticeably frequently, Fate fans are really into, you don't know how to play Fate right. Um, they're really into that. Not all of them, of course, but there's a lot of, um, you don't really get Fate, man. Like, Fate's just like, you don't get it, man. You can't just, like, play it like another game, because it's, like, totally different, man, you know? Like, like Fate's, like, it's, like, totally different. And if you think it's not totally different, then you're just not playing it right. So, uh, uh, so I think about this a lot, and I think about what do I think about this idea that fate is so different from everything else that that you know you're just probably gonna play it wrong. Um, um, they are Krellen. They are. Um, uh, you're going to a J-pop con, and now I'm having some buns because today is a, a prayer day. Oh, good. Um, the doctor gave me these really heavy-duty anti-inflammatories uh, that are supposed to help with the fluid buildup. Uh, <laughs> Krellen, you guessed it. And the thing about fate, which is interesting, is that, yes, it does work on, like, it does trend narrativist, but it is, it can be quite crunchy, do you know what I mean? And I feel like you can probably run it in different ways, and I don't... I don't, I mean, I think I'm going to run it the way I want to run it is <laughs> basically what I'm trying to say is I'm going to run fate the way that I want to run it. And uh, while sometimes even the book itself says certain things about how fate is and what it's supposed to do, I don't think it has to do that. And I don't think so. For example, uh, I was just reading this section on the book that said the only way to play fate is with no rules at all entirely in your mind. That's it. Just just in your mind. Uh, I was more thinking they turned you into a, a jazz avant-garde. So, like, there's this one moment in, in the rule book. It says uh, drama drama over realism. Like, this is a big thing. People are like, fate's not about realism, right? Realism is not interesting. It's about drama. So do whatever would be, like, cinematic and dramatic over what would be realistic. And because realistic is boring. Uh, and, like, never have downtime and just, like, go, go, go. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, I get that it is... it it. Basic, the basic dials are more cinematic, but you can change those dials. And also, I think the real world is pretty dramatic, and I I, I strive for some kind of consistency. So, so I think I'm just going to do some things that are probably different than some of the base assumptions, which I think is fine. And, um, yeah. Like I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna do it my way, and I think it'll be really good. Um, actually, I mean, I'm I'm quite excited about with the right with the right players. I'm quite excited about how it can turn out. But I think there might be some sort of hardcore because there's a uh, there's a thing called the Book of Hanzo. So this is interesting. This guy named uh, Hanzo Hanzo. It's my fake game and I'll run it how I want to run it how I It's my fake game and I'll run it how I want to run it how I want to run it how I want to You run yours your way and I'll run mine mine da, 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 da. 
Um, <laughs> have you heard? Yeah, Modern Pods is super, super dramatic, right? So I'm just saying that there, oh yeah, I didn't tell you, Book of Hanzo, which I haven't finished reading. I started, but like it's online. So some guy named Hanzo wrote this handbook about like, how to play fate really, how to do it right. And I don't even think he works for the company, but everybody kind of worships the book of Hanzo. And they're like, if anyone has any questions about fate, they're like, go to the book of Hanzo. And I was like, whatever. Um, but <laughs> like, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, but I'm just saying that I am planning on running the French resistance in fate because I think there's some really cool things that it can do. But I don't necessarily think that I'm going to run it the way some people imagine it should be done. And I, I'm fine with that. Yeah, Carl's like, I have never heard of Hanzo. Like on the on the Reddit, they're like, and now I think the book of Hanzo is now officially linked on the on the evil hat website. How's that? No, <laughs> no I don't mean the Overwatch character. Although I wonder if they're the same person. Wouldn't that be weird? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's right, Krillin, you've not heard of Hanzo because you're not playing Fate right, noob. Um, <laughs> but it's funny because, oh, on the Reddit, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, what, whatever, Reddit, no, no. Um, but, I, but I think that there's a lot, and I was just talking to somebody, who was I talking to? I was talking to somebody who says that they think that Fate can be run crunchier. And I think that's probably true. And I got a, a source book that the fate of Agaptus, which War of Ashes, which feels a little like it might have more crunchiness. And anyway, I'm excited for the possibilities. Um, but there might be people in the audience who are like, that's not how fate goes. Fate goes like this. And I was like, mm. those are my thoughts on that one. So, uh, <laughs> so, so that's that one. Um, what else did I want to tell you all? I feel like, do I have, oh, my final grades are due tomorrow for, for non-seniors and I'm going to get that done. Um, I am streaming on Saturday. I will be hosting not critical role, but third time's the charm manner of speaking geek space TV. I'll be hosting that, but I think, uh, Salixon will probably be hosting Critical Role if you want to watch that instead. Uh, so, you know, right there's there's the possibilities. What else do I want to tell you? Ugh. Graduation's on Sunday, everybody. School is almost over. School is almost over. <sighs> I'm so excited. Uh, because then I get to go like dive full face into getting the French Resistance stuff prepped and i'm very excited about it um i call it loose fate loose fate i finally remembered and watched the am almost vod yesterday it was so good it was really good right it was really good i feel like when you run this i'll have to sharpen oh jer yeah just sharpen that mod sword just sharpen it and be ready because hey volpez welcome in um hey hey because the thing is it's weird to me because i feel like I think what's interesting is that whereas people will be weird about rules, like with D&D, &D, people get rules lurry for real, right? That's true. I think maybe also for Shadowrun, for some of the crunchier games, um, two, I have to do two ceremonies on Sunday. I've got to do the general graduation ceremony and then the music graduation ceremony. We, we break it up into like one big one and then one small one. So I've got to sit through two ceremonies on Sunday and fateless. Um, so what I think is interesting, and, and like I don't know what this I don't know what this means, right? Like this is a thing that I've noticed, and I don't know what it means, but I'm I'm curious about it. And that is with crunchier games, well, it might all be a little bit different. So for example, with D D and Shadowrun, a lot of the sort of lawyering comes from specifics of the rules, right? They'd say something like oh, well, so-and-so should have gotten advantage there uh, because they were flanking. Or so, like, a person can't actually do this kind of cantrip and this, like, very, like, technical details. Um, oh, I didn't, but I'm going to the post office box tomorrow, and so then I can find out whatever might be there. I'm excited. I'm excited. So P.O. Po box tomorrow. Um, 
No, no, they don't get their diploma twice. They have the general, they get their diploma at their smaller ceremony. The big ceremony is just when everybody comes together. It's like all, I don't know. We have like 7,000 undergrads, right? So you're probably looking at almost 2,000 students who are going to be at the big, big graduation. They, they do not get their diploma there. They just have the ceremony. And then they go to the small graduation that's based on their major. So our graduation is music and drama dance. All those three are do a, a smaller graduation ceremony together. And that's where they get their diploma. And, you know, it's smaller, more intimate. Um, so, right, so Shadowrun and d and is all very, like, technical, like, oh, I don't think you interpreted this rule correctly, like, because this and that. Um, whereas with, uh, whereas with, yeah, right, exactly. Like, so they get, they get their awards, they get, like, there's a big speech at the big graduation that's kind of generic, but then at the smaller graduation, they get their awards, um, they, you know, we all show up and we shake their hands and they get us that we give them a a, a present, uh, an, a graduation gift from us. So, like, you know, it's like it's, it's a more intimate, it's a more intimate thing. Um, so, no, no, because nobody wants two hours of people walking on stage like that is not what anybody wants. Like you do not want uh, 2000 people walking across the stage for like two hours. So, like they try to do like the kind of the short one where they do the big pomp and circumstances and the president gives a speech and everybody gives their speeches, blah, blah, blah. And everybody is like, woo, graduate. But then you have a nice, smaller, more intimate uh, ceremony where everybody walks and, and it's 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 very nice. Um, but so oh, so this is the thing I think is really fascinating, right? So whereas with um, games on the phones are a thing, I suppose that's true. Um, I find that GURPS people don't rules lawyer like Shadowrun and D and D people. D and D people are like, you did that rule wrong, right? You didn't do that one right. It should be different. GURPS people don't tend to do that in my experience because there's so because all there's so many different optional rules. Um, what they tend to do is give you way too much information <laughs> is what I find. They're like, well, if you did that, well, but what about this option or this? Like, they just give you too many options. Like, if, the, if they're going to get all rules lawyerly, well, they, yeah, you can do it. It's just usually, they usually just give you, like, too many options that you don't need. Um, the one thing I did notice, though, is that they will... And, and yeah, and of course, smaller photo ops too. They they will. The big thing with GURPS is that they're the people who think that all skills should be a twelve max, and all stats should be around a ten. And those people are just that's just like their interpretation of what ideal GURPS is and what normal is. But we just I just ignore them. Uh, but. Right, exactly. That's why. So, like, I feel like the rules lawyering doesn't really work the same way in GURPS. But what I found so fascinating with fate is that the way they do the rules lawyering is philosophical, right? So, for example, they're like, what you don't know is you just have to remember that there is no damage in fate. Like, that's just not what it is. Like, there are these, like, these, like, and if you think that what you're doing is checking off damage boxes, you're not. Like, you're just thinking. So, like, it's this real, um, the insistence is that even if you're using the rules correctly, right? This is what I notice about the fate people. Even if you use the rules correctly, they will often challenge you on the the conception of the rules. And that, I think, is super fascinating. You played that wrong. Wait, except if you're using option B from supplement X and then you did it right, except I guess you also swapped in the cinematic option from supplement Y. Yeah, so like, it's really hard to do the rules lawyer for GURPS. It really is. Uh, yes. Because, you know, I mean, yeah. There's just a lot of, so like, which actually something I actually do appreciate about, you can't, can't rules lawyer if you have an early version of the game. Yeah, I do appreciate uh, the ways in which rules lawyerless, rules lawyerness is less in GURPS. Uh, it's just that people will argue about like, people argue about real world stuff that gets irritating. But yeah, it's just this funny thing that I noticed with Fate that people are super into sort of arguing about the philosophy, whether or not you understand the philosophy behind the mechanics. What side to pick in Vampire? Do you mean um, Vampire the Masquerade, the, the RPG? And if so, what are the sides we're arguing between? Are we arguing between um, Vampire, Werewolf, Changeling, Human, Wraith, like different supernatural creatures? 
or are we arguing that we're all vampires and within the vampires, Camarilla Sabat independent, or are we all Sabat and then which clan? What what are what are our sides? Um, yeah. So which 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 sides are we arguing, Ice Bunny? Real world in my fantasy? How how dare you? How very dare you? Um, <laughs> so you know, I just uh, um. Oh, so so Sabat so Camarilla, independent. Well, so uh, oh no, you want clan? Oh, you want clan? So you don't want supernatural or large faction? You want clan? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't. Pick sides. I don't pick sides. I think because I always try to play a character different from the one I played the last time. So, and if if my goal is always to play something different, then I can't really pick sides so much. Like in the last, I mean, the side of truth and light is also the side of disposable troops. But that's the truth and light for you. That is some truth, Krellen. That is that is that is accurate. Um, like so, like in uh, in Jer's game, I played a a, a a Tremere, and I'd never played a Tremere before. So I was like, I'm gonna play a Tremere. Let's do that. So, uh, tr <laughs> Tremere with a werewolf lover. That's it. That's there. You go. Um, Krellen is a shovel head. Confirmed. Yeah, so I just try to play something different from what I played last time, so I don't tend to, like, pick sides personally. I, I yeah, I, I like to compartmentalize. Like, when I'm, I just don't know if I want to get the Camarilla book or the other, the Camarilla book or the other. Well, um, you know, get them both. Uh, if you're a Toreador, you're Camarilla. You don't want to be a Toreador and a Tribune. Mm, mm. Uh, well, one at a time. Get one now. Get one later. Um, so, like when it comes to Camarilla versus Sabat versus Independent, uh, for me, I like the option of being able to do. Like it depends on the campaign, right? If somebody says we're going to do a Sabat campaign, I'll be like, "Cool, I will do that." Woo! If somebody says we're going to do a Camarilla campaign, I'll say, "Cool, I'll do that." Woo! If somebody says Adar campaign, I'll say, "Cool, I'll do that." Woo! Independent. Woo! You know, I just try to like try to be part of whatever it is that we're doing. Hey, Iffy. Um, I mean, vampires are evil and dead, right? So if they die, that's a good thing, right? Hmm. Do you ever look back at the different things you've played and notice any through lines? Oh, that's a really good question, Iffy. Um, so Iffy asked a really good question. That's a great question. Uh, I'm going to answer it in more than one way. I'm going to also, oh, hi. I'm going to answer it more than one way. And the first answer I'm going to be is that I had someone else see a through line in the characters that I played with them. And the through line that he saw, because he was my GM for two or three games for a couple of years. He was the GM, let me see. When I played with him, I played my single dad, single dad cop, ex-cop, and then uh, a a young man, kind of complicated. Um, so, okay, let me tell you what he saw in my through line and how I feel about what he saw, because I think he might be misinterpreting the through line, right? So um, I played two campaigns with him as GM. That is correct. So the first one was a three-year campaign, and that was Transhuman Space, where the the conceit was that we were all private detectives and we did informational crime. We had to come up with a character that would be some kind of private detective. And I had just gotten off of playing a, what was the last thing I had played? I think I was playing a, um, an evil, um, I think the last character, no, who was it? I think the last character I'd played was like in a D&D &D campaign and it was uh, my lawful evil 
mob boss halfling who thought that he was neutral lawful no he was neutral evil he thought he was lawful neutral right so but like a rogue sort of like charismatic smart talky not you know and anyway so i was like i need to play somebody really different and so i decided what would be interesting to play in that setting was i wanted to play somebody conservative because i'd never really done that before so i played somebody who was like a conservative catholic and the conservative catholic doctrine in this particular universe does not believe that clones are people or ai is people they don't believe those they so because they don't they don't think they have souls so they they are opposed to um them <laughs> Like, it's kind of complicated, but, like, they're opposed to them, basically. So sort of cons kind, of cons kind of conservative, not in favor of sort of AI rights, um, single dad. And I thought, because I thought that would be kind of cool and interesting. And one of the things I was really interested in was having somebody who's really physical, like a real sort of beefy fighter type character. Uh, but in a world where everybody's using computers, like what do you do when you're really physical, a physical character, but you're in a world where everybody uses computers? So I thought that would be an interesting thing to play with. And then uh, the second game was a was called Salle d'Arme, and that was a game where it was France, um, and we were all like, what, uh, 18th century France? And we were all, uh, when will people learn that androids are people too? Right, I was like, I'd be like really interested. Like, what do you do with a character who's really physical, but and sort of suspicious of the changes in society? But right, but there you are. Um, and the other one was like 18th century France, and we were all um, learning. We were all learning fencing in a fencing academy. And I was told by the GM, but that this fencing academy, unlike other fencing academies, would take non nobles to learn fencing. And I thought, okay, that'll be cool. So what I thought was that I would pick a person who was the son of a wealthy plantation owner in the West Indies, so sort of half black, and because but they're not noble, right? They're not noble, but they have a lot of money. So they're really rich, but they so they have the money but they don't have the status. And so that he's being sent back to Paris to study law with the goal of maybe being able to marry somebody with a title so that his family could get the prestige, right? They have the money, but they don't have the prestige. So with the goal being try to find someone who, uh, like, because there are nobles who don't have money, and so he's a person who's non-noble with money, so maybe they could get a good match. So that was sort of where he was He was thinking, hey, Falcom of Venon, how are you? And also Hrothgar. So that was his concept. And he was sort of like a little bit bitter about nobles, right? So anyway, my GM said that he thought that my through line for my character concepts were characters who were um, opposed to the setup of the game or who did not, who did not, who were uh, against the setup of the game. And, oh, I'm glad you're good, right? Marry up. I, 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 why I did not talk with a Danish accent. I don't know why I would, because he wasn't Danish. He was he was from the West. No, no, no. Uh, so anyway, but I don't think that's actually true. I don't think it's true that my character concept is always, that my through line is outsider, although I do play a lot of outsiders, but not necessarily, or somebody who's opposed to the concept. Instead, what I would say my through line is... Um, is because sometimes I play somebody who's totally right in, in the center of the thing. Um, like for Little Red Dot's one-off, um, I played a noble who was super into it. Oh yeah, no, but no, this was a, it was a French, it was a French colony. It was not the Dutch West Indies. It was the, the French uh, West Indies. Um, I think it was Martinique. I think it was Martinique. Um, yeah, this, thank you, thank you, Krellen, thank you. Like, if he had said that you're gonna be in a school that only takes nobles, then I would have made a noble character. Like, that's very simple. I mean, I'm just saying, uh, if, <laughs> that's, that's it. Uh, so I don't think that what I do is play necessarily always outsiders or people who go against the grain, but for me, what I, like, if I wanna think what my through line is for making a character, I tend, if it's a long-term character, um, 
yeah, Flora is totally deep in the Camarilla. Like she is not at all an outsider. She's like into it. She's like, these are my people. She loves it. Like she's super into it. Um, but I think for me, my through line is I want a character who has some kind of conflict that will drive them conflict or drive like I, I need I basically need some kind of drive that will m keep the character moving forward and sort of generate momentum for them but also will be um how do I put this um I want to be surprised like for me I don't know if I say outsider, but a character that embodies conflict. Yeah, like, so like for me, yes, right? So for me, there are a couple of things that are important to me. One, I want to make sure that the character is tied to the setting, that it's a character that could not really be in any other place, that is really rooted in that setting, that that I couldn't just pick up and drop somewhere else. Um, and then somebody who has some kind of... Um, I... How do I put this? Okay, here's how I'm going to put it. Some people have arcs for their characters that they want their character to achieve. Um, they want their character to get this thing, right? They as a player want their characters to do things. They have an arc in mind, right, with a shape. I don't tend to work that way. I want what happens to my character both externally and internally to be a bit of a surprise. So I try to make characters that have conflicts or, and or goals, hopefully both, and then I want to try to find out what happens, right? I don't, I don't know what will happen and I don't want to know. And I also don't want, I also don't know um, if it's good, right? So. I will have characters who have goals that I don't know if they're good goals, right? Like, I mean, as a player, I'm not quite certain those are good goals or if I really want them to achieve those goals. Um, but, right, so like, for example, my character, the single cop, was sort of conservative and he really wanted, uh, he wanted a lot of things that I don't, that I personally didn't want. And I wanted things for him that he did not want. Uh, and so the character and I, were not uh did not have the same goals for each other and i would i was interested to find out what would happen like i wanted to know like whose goals would win out would my goals for him win out would his goals for him win out what would happen i don't know that was interesting to me and um with this the um right like that's interesting and then with the with the with the fencer his family wanted him to get married that was his family's goal and he was a little like whatever like he didn't like he kind of he was mm, he was mixed on it and for me i didn't know what would happen i didn't know and i didn't know if him getting married would be a good idea or a bad idea um i don't know if like i didn't i didn't know like i don't i didn't know because basically one of the things is that he his family wanted him to get into this upper echelon of um of prestige because nobles don't pay taxes uh so and that would be really good for their business. And so that's what his family wanted. But he was resentful of nobles because they didn't treat him well. And so I didn't know if it was going to be, I didn't know if he would be able to learn to play the game, right? Like for him to be successful as a character, he would learn, he would need to learn how to play the game of, of um, society, right? You know, manners. And he didn't think he needed to learn that those skills, but I knew that he did, and I didn't know if it would happen or not, right? Like, people told me he needed to learn it, but I didn't know if he would do it, and I wanted to find out through the game if that would happen. So I'm always interested in a character that is dynamic enough that I don't know what will happen with them, I don't know which way they'll go. And um, a character that I know where it's very clear to me what they want and how they're going to get it is not as interesting to me, right? I want to not know. And I and I also don't want to be certain if the thing, like, that's interesting to me. Like, so for example, um, my character who was the neutral evil rogue who thought that he was lawful neutral, that was the core conflict that I was interested in exploring. I was interested in exploring alignment in D&D &D a little bit and and how 
third edition sort of defined alignment and how people sort of think about them. Like in a world where you can find out people's alignment through detect alignment spells, um, what does that mean? But also he always wore a ring of mind shielding so no one could figure out what his alignment was, but he never took it off. And so he was a little bit delusional about who he thought he was, who was not who he was. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was, uh, I mean, I love this idea, right? That this, here's this, uh, rogue, right? This D and D rogue who's a, who's, um, he's the head of a thieves guild, right? He's a mob boss and he's a, a halfling. And in this world, the halflings don't have a homeland and they're treated sort of poorly. And so he, he cares about halflings and he will donate money to halfling causes, you know, so that halflings can get, you know, he cares about that. He gives to charity quite a lot. Um, he treats his people, his, his thieves really well, the people of his thieves guild very well. He takes care of them. If their family is sick, you know, he'll give them some money to take care of their sick family. Um, and, you know, like there's like a lot that he would do for these people. And if you ask him, he would say, I'm lawful because I have a code of honor, right? I, I live by a code. For example, you don't attack people's family, you attack them. Like he has this whole sort of code that he says that he believes in. Um, Hrothgar says, I'm all about general back. He's very Godfather one. Like, so I was thinking about him being like the first Godfather. I'm all about a general background. The character comes to life naturally. Yeah. I'm surprised by characters as everyone is like, I, I love that surprise. Yeah. So in some ways he's very much like the Godfather one or more like he thinks that he's like Godfather one, like in his mind, he thinks of himself as the Godfather one, like an honorable, noble, uh, uh, person who's lawful. And he certainly doesn't think he's evil, right? Because he's like, well, I don't, <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't murder people. He does, but like, he doesn't murder people who don't deserve to be murdered. Like, and he doesn't like just murder innocent people. And like, I mean, he's like, and he, and he would rather not murder people. He might break your legs if you don't pay him, but that's not murdering you. I mean, now if you don't pay him enough, he might murder you. But I mean, again, you know, he's not evil because he doesn't do evil things. Um, but the thing is, and this is the thing that I thought about that I knew about him that he didn't know about himself is that while he thinks of himself as lawful neutral because he has this code, he's also, if he would, he would bend the code if it were more convenient for him, right? Like if he had to murder an innocent person to get what he needed, he would do it, right? But he doesn't think that, he doesn't like to think of himself as a person that would do that, but he totally would. And although he doesn't think of himself as an evil person, he extorts people for money. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's he's the head of a criminal organization that does a lot of bad things. And so I was really, really interested in this sort of, the, the gap between how you see yourself um, and the fact that D&D &D has uh, objective alignment. Like, and that was really interesting to me. Yeah, you're giving me no choice but to murder you, said local evil murderer. Yeah, so that was like a thing that I was really interested in. And the, the best thing is I was in a party that had a paladin who was lawful good and a, one of those lawful good paladins. You know, one of those kind. And the, the lawful good paladin would have totally smited my character, but could not detect my character as evil at all because of the ring of mind shielding. And my character was very, my character was very nice. Like he was a very friendly person. And um, the paladin just couldn't, couldn't prove it. <laughs> it was, was kind of awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of awesome. I, I loved it because the paladin's like, but you're evil. And my character's like, no, I'm not. And like, that's just not true. And there was like, it was, it was very interesting. It was very interesting because my character then uh, would provoke the paladin a little bit because it, we were high, we were high level and we had to like stop badness. It was one of those sort of D&D &D campaigns where, you know, there's going to be rifts in the dimensional doors and evil creatures from other dimensions are going to come in and destroy the world, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, um, I was trolling the paladin. Krellen, I don't always troll. I don't always troll, but when I do troll, I troll with Dos uh, I, I did. I did troll this, this paladin pretty hard. Um, I did, it's true. But but here's the thing, the paladin was super self-righteous and judgy all the time. And my character was like, huh, hmm, interesting. So that door needs to be broken into. Somebody needs to pick that lock. 
um, do you do you want me to do that, Paladin? And the Paladin would say, yes, please do that. And then I would do it. And then I'd come back and I'd say, so the only way you could do what you want is by having me do things for you that you think are are dishonorable things, but you're asking me to do them, which makes me think that basically you're complicit in all of my actions. So how does that make you feel? So my, <laughs> so I, I did, I, 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 I do not, I do not always troll, but when I do troll, I troll paladins. And this is, uh, this is fair. It's fair. <laughs> this is, but, and here's the thing, my character, this, that particular character, uh, Cade, um, he owned brothels and, I mean, cause he was a, you know, he was a crime lord. Um, and of course, politicians and nobles and all these people would come to his establishments. And so what he saw, the way he saw it was that he had a role in society and that the people who thought of themselves as good people um, needed him. And so therefore he didn't think of himself as any worse than they were. And he, did, he certainly did not think that they were better than he was. And he thought that they were complicit in all his activities. And so he thought they were all hypocrites. And he, um, he would point it out at times. He would troll. He would troll just a little bit. Just a little bit. But it was really good. It was good. It was good. It was it was a good campaign. But the fencer was fun. He was very fun. And I love games like that. So yeah, I like um I really like dynamic characters where you don't know where they're going to go and you don't know what's going to happen to them. You even you as a player don't necessarily know. And I love it when a GM will will give me opportunities to sort of see where my character will go. And I, as a GM, try to give my players opportunities. Ooh. Come on in my house, my house, come on. Come on in my house, my house, I'm gonna give you candy. Come on in my house, my house, I'm going to give you everything. Colonel RPG, welcome in, welcome in, Raiders. Oh, wait, I, I should give you a... A, a raid thing here. I'm gonna tell you. Uh, here you go. I've got a I've got a raid response for you, Colonel RPG. Wait. Uh, here's here here it is. This is not a raid response. That is not even how you spell raid. Um, pretend like raid is spelled correctly here. Let's just pretend like that is spelled correctly. There you go. Um, <laughs> this is not a raid response. Uh, what? 22 messages. Hey everybody, welcome in. Welcome in. What'd you do? But but I has clip. Wait, wait. Justice. Hold on. I can make uh Jer, if you're here, can you make Iffy a regular? There's a way to do it, and I, I don't even remember. Wait, maybe I can do it from here. Can I do it? Uh there's like a I mm, wait. No, I don't even know. So somebody somebody do it for me. Uh Thank you, Jer. No, I think it's the other one. Wait, wait, no, wait, wait. We're gonna get you in there. <laughs> no, no, Iffy, we're gonna get you in there. It's, it's, uh, is it? Oh, you misspelled ad. That's what it was. Red ad. Uh, is that it? Yes. Now you can post, now you can post the link, Iffy. Now you can do it. It, it is now uh, doable. Welcome in, Colonel RPG. We were talking about, uh, we're gonna play Where the Water Tastes Like Wine, which is the game we're playing for today. Um, but we are talking right now about RPG characters and if we have through lines for the kinds of characters we make, because one of the things I always try to make someone who's different from what I made before, but if he asked, is there a through line? And I find that my through line is often that I want some kind of, uh, dynamic conflict um that becomes interesting to me we, we, we're gonna play a game you lied uh oh no jer i get it um so like i want some kind of dynamic conflict and it could be internal it could be external some kind of conflict that i as a player do not know how it will resolve and then me playing that character is about exploring that conflict and seeing what will happen Right. So for that one, for that rogue, the conflict was between the alignment that he thought himself to be and the alignment on his character sheet. Uh, for my one, my single cop dad, it was an analog person in a digital world. Right. Uh, for my fencer, it was a person who was 
tasked to become noble, but who kind of didn't like nobility. Um, for Flora, it, there's a conflict between um, who, Flora's my Tremere, who's like super pro Camarilla, and it's between mm, individual and team, I suppose. Wait, no banning. Uh, <laughs> but except that it may not be internal conflict, uh, Krellen. That's the thing. It might be internal conflict, but it might not be internal conflict. I think it's some kind of conflict. So uh, I think, for example, my fencer didn't have internal conflict. He himself knew where he was at, but there was a conflict between him and society in a certain way, or it was a conflict between his 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 parents' expectations and what he wanted. So it wasn't particularly internal for him, but it was more like external pressures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Setting specific conflict, which can be internal, but might not be. It might not be internal. Right. So like I think with Flora, she herself felt pretty like she knew what she wanted, which was to amass power um, and uh, to amass power subtly and um, behind the scenes. But she's with a coterie that is really loud and flashy, and she needs to make sure they don't screw things up because that'll reflect badly on her. So there's an like interesting tension between sort of like her individual desire for power and the coterie that she's in that is too flashy, right? So it's about this kind of particular kind of like individual group thing for her, but that's not really that didn't really feel internal because she felt internally pretty settled. It's just she's dealing with this particular regular external conflict that she needs to manage. So, but I want some kind of conflict. And the thing about, I think internal conflict is often easier to make because um, I can control that as a player. Like if as a player, I know I can do that one, but I don't always know if I can make an external if the if the GM does not give me good setting information, then I can't necessarily do really good external conflict. But I do love a good external conflict. Like I love that one. Like that's a her conflict was micromanagement. Yes, yes. Uh, and really, her conflict was how do I manipulate the people around me to get them to do what I want without them knowing that I'm doing it? Like she, <laughs> she, she had she had things. It, she had things going on um, that she that she liked. Uh, she had things. Oh, player made. Ah, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Although I will also take it from, um, I will also take it from the setting. If the GM gives me enough, then I'll do that too. But you have to make sure, like a lot of times in D and D, it's not going to be there, um, right? Because a lot of times D and D, they're just like it's a set and go, um, and you have to sort of find it. Micromanagement or just high standards? It's a good question. It's a good question. Mm. I would say with, with Flora, my Tremere, one of the main things that she wants to always to seem, she wants never to be implicated in things. She, she wants to be able to do all the things, but not get her hands dirty. But that's, that's really, yeah. Yeah. She, it's about, but the problem is that, <sighs> That's what she wants. She wants to manipulate everyone and puppet master them and never get her hands dirty. That's what she wants. Uh, get all the power without having to do anything personally. But the problem was with the coterie, she had to do things personally because they were like being ridiculous. And she's like, oh, I would like to puppet master a little bit more, but now you're wandering around like strange puppies and I have to like herd you. And that was, <laughs> and that was uh, what she had to do. Trooper, you have been streaming for over an hour with no game. Clearly this is because you realize video games are bad. No, no, video games are great, but I'm just like, I'm gonna, you know, we have to like warm up into it. <laughs> Sounds like you're entertained by the misery of your character is going through some kind of conflict. Mm. It doesn't have to be misery. Like I will do like super happy characters who are super into things, but I think what I would say is, I need the characters to have some kind of dynamism. I don't want a static character. A character that is just static, that is what they are, is fine if I'm playing a one-shot that's not gonna be pretty deep, but what I really love is exploring a character's 
self. And if the self has got nothing going on, then I don't have a much I don't have much fun. But it doesn't have to be misery. It can be um, um, because I. Uh, It doesn't, it doesn't have to be misery, is what I would say. Um, it could be responsibility or or any, you know, it could be different things. Like I think about um, my conservative ex-cop single dad was actually not a particularly miserable character. Uh, he was sort of out of step and maybe frustrated by things in society, but he himself was pretty internally well for most of the game. Then it got actually kind of, then things happened. But as a setup, he was comfortable right um he was comfortable as set up it's just that society wasn't comfortable with him yeah jealousy right there it could be lots of things it could be lots of things um but i love a good i love a good um yeah i just and the thing is for me if i do that if i draw characters that have desires and wants uh, and conflicts then i'm giving the gm presence right like i'm giving them and sometimes and sometimes it's a super internal conflict like sometimes i'll just go full-on internal um but sometimes it's like an interesting concept uh so there's a character that is not mine it's somebody else's in the call of cthulhu game and we are going to play where the water tastes like lime we, we, we are not where the water tastes like lime that's different um but not mine but it's a kind of a character that like i'd be like oh that's that's a that's a thing I would do. Um, I am. Oh, I've got a really great T-shirt that says "Why Yes I Am God." It's a GM T-shirt. Don't worry about it. But anyway, the character is it's for Call of Cthulhu, and it's um, the character is a mafia accountant who's not a good person, right? He is not a good person. Uh, this is the game that I'm playing right now, where I'm playing the uh, Japanese American journalism student. This is uh, 1947 Seattle. I, I do love a good lime. And so I'm playing like an idealistic, well, I'm playing a character, my character, um, Tommy, is sort of stuck because on one hand, he's super idealistic. He believes that like revealing the truth can make things better and and being a kind of a crusading journalist type. But on the other hand, he and his family have just come out of internment. So he's also kind of cynical. And so he's like, he's his tension is about trying to figure out this what will win out the cynicism or the idealism so that's his internal conflict it's about cynicism versus idealism um and <laughs> this character i tell you the one who's the, the the mafia accountant when you ask the player um what his character's concept was he said i wanted to pl play a character who in in any other campaign would be a villain but in a call of cthulhu game would not be because there are way worse things and he's kind of a sociopath and that's really like, and the idea of like that like that way of sort of creating a character where you're playing with expectations or you've got some kind of um um disconnect right between like there's some kind of something is a little bit out of place that you can play with that's that is often how i how i like to come up with characters right like i i find that so what I don't do is like, I don't, I'm not the person who plays the same thing over and over again. I'm not, I'm not the person who has a thing that they really like. And that's the thing they do. Like, oh, I love playing wizards. I'm going to play wizards. Or I really like to just beat things up. So I'm going to play like, I don't, yeah, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, what I'm tend to be doing is like, I want to explore some kind of concept and that's what I tend to want to do. I want to explore some kind of concept and see what happens with it. So that tends to be my my process of making a character. So if there's a through line, is that there's some kind of conflict, either internal or external, that I'm exploring. My new Tinder profile tag, in the world of Cthulhu, there are worse things. Hey, that's, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if that would get you lots of dates. And if so, what kind of dates that would get you? I mean, I don't, I don't know. But I do have questions. I have questions about that. Oh, in the, in the world of Cthulhu, there are worse things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But I try not to repeat characters if I can. If he wants... Ooh, Ify. If you're going to date Eldritch Horrors, um, 
don't date Eldritch Horrors. It never turns out well. It never turns out well. But, you know, also, I don't think they're good for your sanity. Like, I think that they, 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 I think that it doesn't turn out well in the end. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you like tentacles, a number of them do have tentacles. That could be a thing. Um, <laughs> you'll get horror flick dates. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but I can change them with the power of love. Oh, why Why is the entire foxhole full of hilariousness and awesomeness at this moment? This is what I want to know. And I don't even understand the answer to this question. It's true. All, all they want is a hug. They just they just want a hug. Um, hug the tentacly. I think I don't. Oh, I don't. If I were to if I were to date an eldritch horror. I suppose I'd have to date the king in yellow, right? Because that person is the one that has this most likely, like, because they like art um, and they're somewhat humanoid, I think. <laughs> We're awesome. <laughs> it's the marriage contract if he wants a patron. Mm. Um, we're awesome because you don't waste your time by playing video games. I'm totally going to play the video game, though. The Man in the Pallid Mask, right? I feel like yeah, the Man in the Pallid Mask, I feel like there's some dating possibilities there. Um, because I think you'd get to go to the theater a lot, see really good shows, listen to music, be driven insane. It's fine. Um, <laughs> Krillin, I'm totally going to do it. I, I, I'm threatening to play the video games. I'm going, oh, hey. Thanks, uh, Krillin, you reminded me of a thing that was not video games, but I am going to get there. But I do want to say, I want to tell you all because there are people hanging out uh, in chat. Look, this Sunday at noon, when I'm in the middle of graduations, uh, tickets for events go on sale for Gen Con. That is what is happening. And um, if you want to, if you are going to Gen Con, I will be GMing three sessions of Clockwork Dominion, um, two on Thursday, one on Saturday, like 11 o'clock, four o'clock, and I think on Thursday, and I think three o'clock on Saturday. And if you want to play in a game that I'm GMing, uh, go and get tickets. The scenario that I'm GMing is called In For A Penny. So if you're going to Gen Con and you want uh, to play at one of the tables that I'm GMing, uh, I'm telling you about it, and I'm telling you because the, I think the the um, the events sort of fill up, I think, often or quickly, but I want you all to know because I like you all, and I figured, like, I don't want the battle buddies to know about it. So if you want to, you can do it. Um, that's all. Uh, you know, it, you know, Doubt Campaign did have some, you know, it did have some romantic, it's, it's true, it did have some romantic subtext. I need to play Battletech. Um, I need to play Battletech. Is it insanity or is it really just the power of love? Um, <laughs> I'm just, uh, this is what I'm saying. So, yes, you all can play RPGs with me at Gen Con. It is my, it is my first Gen Con um, jamming. It's my first time jamming at Gen Con, so I'm really excited about it. And it's a thing that you can do. Oh, also, are you okay with us bringing TFAers, TCU, Card, and Investigators? Oh, no, no, you can bring whatever you want. Aneo, bring whatever you want. Whatever you want. So, Gen Con hype. I'm really excited because so, just do it. You don't have to do it. If you're not going, don't do it. If you are going and you want to do other things, do other things. It's fine. But I just wanted, rather than just GMing for complete strangers, if there are battle buddies who want to play with me, then I would be happy to do so because it would be really fun. So, possibility. If you're not going to Gen Con, don't even worry about it. But I just wanted to put it out there. That's it. Um, what else? I feel like that's it. So, why did that not work? I press buttons. So we're totally going to play Where the Water Tastes Like Wine, for real. But here's the thing about it. Um, we're we're going to try to... We're going to try to work out August. And... Um, I know, video games. But the thing about August, and I'm, he creeps me out. He's our merchant marine. He's the guy who's the merchant marine. And I, I, he kind of creeps me out. And no, Krellin, no, Krellin, Krellin. I wish I had an overhead camera. 
um, Krellen, don't leave me. But what about, what about all the times we had together? You know, back before the war. <laughs> Krellen, what about the time before the war? Um, <laughs> oh, that makes me that makes me happy. So this is, by the way, um, the war, right, Krellen? The war. Uh, <laughs> Krellen, can't you hear me yelling? Oh, uh, we have six more people left in this game before this game is over, and then we do a different game. Um, and there are so many games. I thought it was. I know you thought you were past the war, but you can never be past the war. Oh, I was gonna say random things, but I'm not going to. I, uh, that's what Cthulhu said, but here you are pulling me back in. Speaking of which, sorry, okay, hold on. Okay, look, I'm going to get back to the game in a second, but before I get back to it, I just wanted to say one more thing. Do you know what, you wanna know what I wanna do? Um, I want to run, and again, I do not do this on purpose. This is not, I am not the historical only GM. I swear I can do non-historical games, but I really would like to do like um, just more, um, oh, battery died, boo. I would like to do like a, a, a crime game, like, like a full on, like, I mean, Cthulhu Confidential, yeah, but that's still Eldritch. But I'd like to do a, like a 1920s Prohibition crime game. You know, a real good noir crime game. And there's Capers, which is superheroes, but I would just like a non supernatural, you know, like really Godfather 2, you know, like where you're like maybe. That's all. Uh, poisons the whiskey. This is what I mean. You can poison the whiskey like a real, like, I suppose kind of like Blades in the Dark, right? But Blades in the Dark is, I think, also supernatural because it's a fantasy setting. Crimey crimes. I want to, I want a crime game. I want to do a really, like, maybe leverage. I could use the leverage rules, maybe. Um, be gay to crimes. Yeah, I want, I want villains and vigilant. Yeah, I want some, I want a crime game. I think that would be super fun. Um, I would like that. I also I also need to do a full on, yeah, I mean, leverage. And there's a leverage game and I should get the rules for it because I think that would be really good. Uh, really? They're bringing back leverage? Yes, Shadow from the Show, yes, yes. Uh, a, a Hercule Poirot RPG would be like, yeah, I wanna, I wanna do a little bit more, a little bit more mysteries because I enjoy them very much. Um, and also, what else? I really want to run my cyberpunk game. I ca call speakeasy owner. Oh, well, see, okay, now, Pumpkin, if you're like, I want to be a speakeasy owner, think about this. Think about this. Here's the setup. If that's the case, we say, okay, we want to do a prohibition crime game somebody says i want to be a speakeasy owner i would say to the rest of the players how would you feel about uh being a crew that owns an independent small speakeasy right in let's say chicago or we can sort of pick a place um and if that so that would be a kind of a cool idea so you're like there's a small crew of you and you have your own speakeasy which means you're gonna have to deal with the mob trying to muscle in and take over the cops um trying to find ways to expand your crew um you would have like drama with trying to get the good um bands to play in your speakeasy but other people trying to go and take those bands from you like you can i can imagine all sorts of really cool things that you could do where the base setup is that the the players are all running a speakeasy. That would be good. That would be good. Bathtub gin. Um, John Roger has moved on. No more leverage. Oh, no. Oh, villains and vigilantes. Mm. There's a 1920 speakeasy comic, but the characters are cats. It's so good. Lackadaisy cats. Oh, I should check that out because um, I like that. <laughs> See, I'm just saying that that could be a really fun, um, that could be a really fun game where everybody's sort of like in this, 
Yeah, you could do Blades in the Dark for that totally, right? I feel like Blades is... I, I picked up Blades in the Dark, didn't I? I did. I did. I picked it up. I picked up the... I picked it up. It's over there. You can't see it. Speaking of which, I need to propagate that shelf there with more gaming books is what I need to do. And I'm, I'm going to do that. Set in Canada, they have their own prohibition, but allowed personal use booths. Ooh, that would be interesting. If you said it, if you said it in Canada, or or in the U.S., but like Niagara Falls, you could also get smuggling stuff back and forth. That could be really fun. I'm just saying, there's a lot there. And the plots are kind of what you just talked about. The main speakeasy run by a woman in a fragile position, competing to keep her business going. Ooh. Mm. Mm. I. I like things like that. I just, I just want you to know it. I, I am a sucker for, um, yeah. Hey, sorry. I'm gonna go. I'm going to play where the water tastes like wine in five minutes. What do you think about this? Okay. So first off, I wanted to show you something. I'm sure. I, have I shown this before? <laughs> what was this? Cyberpunk adventure. Okay, so here is Dallas, the television role-playing game. I know, it's shocking that like 20s and art, right? right? So, uh, <laughs> five-ish minutes. So here's Dallas, I got it from eBay, I'm so excited. The role-playing game, uh, all the drama and power and wheeling and dealing, the loves and lives of TV's greatest family are yours to enact in this fun-filled, fast-playing game. Um, right? So this is like what characters, scripts, plot devices, director's guide, easy rules. And there they are, right? All the Dallas people, uh, nothing on the back of the box. But so I have this game and um, I got it on eBay. I was so excited because how exciting is that? And um, I think it would be super fun to play a one shot or if not a one shot, like a little mini series, like, you know, one to three episodes, one to three sessions of of like full on nighttime soap. I feel like this could be super fun, everybody. I want to do it real bad because now I have to get myself caught up on on Dallas lore because I didn't I didn't watch Dallas. I watched Dynasty. Uh, but I would love like how fun would that be I just kind of think the idea of like a real sort of uh, over the top 80s RPG nighttime soap RPG with like big hair and shoulder pads and like fights in the pool and ridiculousness and like board meetings like I think it could be really fun I think it would be uh, hey Ms. Sue how are you right right to see right there I'm just saying, with the right people, it would be amazing. Um, over the, right? I'm just saying, I think it could be really good. And um, Miss Sue, big hugs. Um, I I think it would be fun. I think it would be really, really fun. And you just have to get people who have the buy-in. Do you know what I mean? Like people who are really excited to play like a one shot and just like go, just go, go for it. I so that is the thing I would like to do. And there's no magic, but I, I think it'd be super fun. That's all. Oh, a Gilligan's Island? Uh, I am, I am, my wrist is messed up and they have me on anti-inflammatories that make me sort of tired. But other than that, I'm feeling good because grades are due tomorrow and graduation's on Sunday. So I'm like, woo, right? Yes. Ah. Uh. Shoulder pads for everyone, men and women, big hair, the biggest hair. I just, I just feel like a Dallas, I, and I, I should just read this, not right now, because I have other things I have to do first, but I would love to do, and I would probably not set it in the Dallas universe, but like generic 80s nighttime soap universe. I would love to do that so hard, because uh, I think that would be fun. So there's just, oh, the finish line is so close. I just think there's a lot of, uh, um, moving out of the dorm on Monday. Um, everybody else is moving out. Well, all the undergraduate, all the, the only people who are in the dorms right now are, are seniors. Everybody else has already moved out. Um, it's just the seniors who are here at the moment. But I'm just saying, now I don't know if the rules are good, but I don't care. I want to do it. So I just kind of want to have some some fun. I return and Trooper is, no, no, TiVo, I'm totally playing video games uh conceptually in in my mind just just it's there 
Well, that's true. How did JR keep the stock prices up? It was magic. Um, <laughs> this is Friday, Friday. Talking RPGs on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend, weekend. Friday, fr you know that song? Very catchy, very catchy. Um, it totally is, it is. Um, yes, so I'm just saying that there are opportunities for like, I just wanna play a lot of like different kinds of things that are different, right? Just, oh, Mr. thank you for dancing to the Rebecca Black. Um, I think it'd be more fitting to be Roseanne from the first season of the show. Hmm, well, I bet you could do a good Roseanne. I also think that, I mean, I, I wonder about, um, look, we're gonna play Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. N note it, we're gonna do it. But here's what I was thinking, right? I was thinking that there are a number of genres that are number one. Okay, rewind. Let me tell you. For me, for me, I speak only from myself, um, I tend to be more inspired by TV than film for RPGs. I tend to be inspired by books and TV rather than film because books and TV have longer arcs and I like to I like to run longer campaigns and uh it is it is true it is in, it is in fact Thursday it's true um and so I I like the pacing that you get in I feel like the pacing that you get in um TV sort of fits a little bit better in RPGs than film which is not so but anyway my point is when you think about tv and you think about what are like the big most popular shows um some things you see showing up showing up in rpgs but there are some things that are not for example uh, police procedurals medical shows those are huge huge and like we don't see a lot of rpgs that are police procedurals or medical shows but i bet they'd make really good I bet they'd make a really good RPG. I bet you could do a really good, you know, Chicago Hope. Like, could you imagine a really good medical, like a medical procedural RPG where you're all interns at the hospital or doctors? Like, I could see it. Like, it's like, yeah, like a kind of a, yeah, right. I think a police procedural could be really good. I think a medical show could be really good. Um, so, yeah, right. So I think that that, and I would be really interested in, with the right players who are into it, you know, doing a, um, you know, like a, like a medical show. I would prefer they were skinned with some other elements. Um, uh, you can't imagine. See, the thing is, I think I can imagine the medic, the medical one, pretty easily, right? You could think about, um, isn't that a thing? The bag in the show is, is 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 never lupus. It's always lupus. Um, so I mean, I think what happens is that you there'd probably be a lot of politics in that medical show. Um, you'd have people trying to. Um, I mean, in some ways, I think it would be sort of like Vampire, the Masquerade, but it's a medical show. Um, I mean, with the police procedural, like of course you're like, oh, you're doing cases, you're trying to find the bad guy, da da da. But with um, but with the medical one, you're trying to. It's never lupus until one episode when it was lupus. That's when House jumped the shark. Because <laughs> it's never lupus, and then it's lupus. Uh, I don't know what a sitcom would be like. That one... <clears> hmm. <throat> hmm. I feel like with a sitcom kind of RPG, it'd have to be episodic, right? Where, like, each episode um, is some kind of... Oh, internal agency stuff like in the X-Files, that would totally happen... Um, there'd be some kind of medical mysteries. Um, no insight checks for the doctor since patients are always lying. What else? <laughs> so I feel like you could probably do it. You'd have to, um, you'd have to pick it. You'd have to sort of like set it up right. But, you know, cause here's the thing. I imagine you'd probably, maybe you'd do something like, um, maybe people are like a trauma team. Like maybe they're all, uh, paramedics. Like you could do that. Right, Scully was always cutting up bodies. Uh, don't worry about don't worry about your English. Yeah, you could use like an old RPG like Tune. So I so I'm just sort of interested in some of these uh, TV genres. Oh, hey, here's a thought. I don't think I would do it. And if I did do it, I don't know how I would do it. But 
Oh, a Shadowrun Dock Wagon, a Shadowrun Dock Wagon campaign would be really good, right? That would get you that kind of medical procedural, but it's in a Shadowrun universe. Oh yeah, that'd be really good. I could totally see a Dock Wagon campaign. That'd be yeah, that'd be great, right? That'd be awesome. Um, a lot of elements of supernatural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one would work too. Like there are a lot that would I think would work well. But here's the question: How would you do a reality show? Like I don't even know if you could do a reality show. And if you did do a reality show, would you be meta about it? Okay, so rewind. You could easily do a little mini series campaign that was like Survivor, where the players make regular people and then they're dumped off on an island and they have to survive and see who wins. Like that is easy, easy to do because they're challenges. And uh, you could you could do Survivor Survivor as a reality show pretty easily. I think you could probably do The Amazing Race um, as a reality show pretty easily. Um, <laughs> Those things I think you could do, uh, but I'm not quite certain how you would do, um, how you would do like Jersey Shore. Live in a haunted dungeon house? Oh, oh, okay. That would be kind of fun though. Like I feel like, uh, I feel like you could do, I feel like you could do some really fun and interesting things with that one. Road rules. Yeah. So I feel like there's certain kinds of reality shows that you could do as an RPG. without too much shenanigans. Paradise Hotel. So I feel like, yeah, yeah. Jersey Shore would be easy. You'd have the gym tan laundry phase and then the nightclub phase. Wait, so I feel like then what you're saying is that uh, with confessionals, okay, so the goal is to smash, obviously. So then the question becomes, would you use Powered by the Apocalypse or would you use a manner of speaking to do your Jersey Shore RPG? Because if you do a manner of speaking, the monologue token would be the confessional, clearly, right? Like you give them the monologue token and then they have to go in the confessional. Um, and, oh, I think, I think, I think actually, I think you'd have to do it with a manner of speaking. I think that's the way you would do the Jersey Shore. Yeah, yeah. So I need to, we need to have a discussion about this somewhere, right? This would be, this would, this, that would do it, right? That's how you would do the Jersey Shore. You would do it in a manner of speaking because they also have reputation, right? So like people's reputation would go up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monologue tokens would be great. So um, I am going to write this down. I'm going to write this down. Uh, manner of speaking. Oh, um, Jersey Shore. So here's what's up, everybody. I am going to look into doing this. Do not think that I won't, because I will. Um, fist bump. I, I, I want to. I want to do it now. Man of speaking, Fourth Shores of Jersey. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that'd be really good, everybody. And I know that there's something wrong with me. I know that. I know that there's something wrong with me, but I cannot help it. I cannot help it. I think a real world thing could work, but you need to have the GM guide character creation to build characters that antagonize each other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you run the tomorrow, we'll never sub again. Or would you sub even more, Volpez? I feel like the real world would have to be powered by the apocalypse based on monster hearts. But I feel like Jersey Shore would totally be a manner of speaking. Speaking of, um, speaking of, did you ever see, um, there was a, a thing on YouTube. Um, YouTube, uh, let me see if I can find it because you'll find it funny. Uh, her name was Cecily, Cecily last name. Uh, she was an actor. She did some improv stuff kind of earlier. It was like um, Jersey Shore, uh, uh, Jersey Shore, like Jane Austen, maybe. Uh, oh, gosh. <sighs> I can't find it right now, but I will find it. There was um, there was a a thing on YouTube where they were reading actual dialogue from the Jersey Shore as if they were in a Jane Austen novel, and uh, it was super good, <laughs> super good. Um, yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to talk about this later. This is I'm going to have to explore this as a possibility because because uh that is a thing hey crit witch um <laughs> i'm just right um i feel we caught you before bed sorry the image is funny but also hello hello um yes i know people 
Come on to my house, my house, come on. Come on to my house, my house, I'm gonna give you candy. Come on to my house, my house, I'm going to give you everything. Thank you for the host, Crit Witch. Thank you. Um, I know people from there. It's fine to have to deal with them in person. Oh, Jersey Shore. Go, go, team. No no game. I'm totally going to do it. Uh, Jane Austinetti. There's actually a two version where they're at the border between Louisiana and Florida. Huh. Hello, Doctor on Sundays. Planet Earth TTRPG. I feel like you could do like a Bear Grylls. We're talking about different TV shows or genres that we could model as t tabletop RPGs. And I really feel like you can do the Jersey Shore. And now I really want to do it. I want to do it so bad. So bad. So bad. Um, that's that's all I want to say. I And I'm going to do it. Just Cecily, what was her last name? Cecily, I don't remember. I can't remember what her name was. I'm going to find it and I'll put it in the Discord. By the way, we have a Discord. And uh, you should um, you should join our Discord if you haven't done. Um, by the way, we're going to... I know, I'm just, I'm just saying, I feel like... Manner speaking hack, Jersey Shore, brilliant. I'm I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited for this. Uh Florida Bama Shore, Florida Alabama Shore idiots. Yeah. I think I just think it'd be really good. I think it'd be so good. And the thing is you do it like, oh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I just I just I want you to know I am so excited about the idea of a Jersey Shore tabletop RPG based on a manner of speaking. Just for the record, I'm putting it out there, um, <laughs> and it's it is here. Um, I'm I'm going to talk to Lauren about this because I I I want to have this I want to have a discussion with her about this. And uh, oh dear, but it'll be good because the monologue tokens are going to be the confessional tokens, and you just sit them in a confessional, and it's just it's going to be good, everyone. I wanted to tell you that we do have a giveaway today, and the giveaway is um, uh, a game. Rapture Rejects is the game we're doing a giveaway. It is a battle royale, but it's sort of like humorous uh, uh, comedy, and that's going to be our giveaway for today. So, you know, just say, say something in the next five minutes, and then we'll do the giveaway. And then we're going to play Where the Water Tastes Like Wine, for real, though, for like a good 45 minutes-ish. Oh, homebrew a cake party. And... Now, the thing is, you could also do it in Powered by the Apocalypse, where you'd have moves like gym, tan, and laundry. Uh, but no, I just, okay, I'm just telling you, I'm we're going to have to, this is it. There's going to be a good society. Yeah. Good society, Jersey Shore edition. It's just going to have to, it's going to have to happen. Because I, I want to see uh, what is Kiss being a juice head meatball. And I, a juice head gorilla, juice head gorilla. And I want to see, I just want to see, there are a lot of people I want to see doing that. That's, that's it. Right. Could you imagine like drunkly Lauren Blue Jay? I mean, I'm just telling you, there's so many people who will be so good in a Jersey Shore one shot. I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, I just, you know, it would be brilliant. You know it. Oh my gosh. So, you heard it here, folks. Do not think that I will not get on it because I will. I will uh, totally get on that and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send some inquiries out because, oh, uh, Keeson's great and I think he would be amazing, amazing in the Jersey Shore game. Uh, so, yeah. For someone who could get drunk by 15, it is a bit odd to see 20-somethings get drunk like a 15-year-old. Um, patent pending. Well, remember, uh, the... Alcohol, uh, age of alcohol drinking in the, in the United States is 21, uh, Ice Buddy. You know, we, we have it up here. I want to see the look on their faces when their baby girl RPG grows up in New Jersey. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, oh, and you could also do teams. Like, I just feel like uh, there are some really cool things you could do for, like, you know, when I say one shot, I mean, like, you know, one to three sessions. And I'm... Um, I'm excited for that. I'm really excited. All right. Um, here's what I'm, we're going to find out who wins Rapture Rejects. We're going to do this giveaway. We're doing it. Nightbot, tell me who wins? Who wins? Who is it? Levi? 
Hey, Levi. Hey, Levi. Levi. Uh, oh, you have it. All right. You have it? If you have it, then I will do a second draw. Second draw. Yeah, I know, right? Come on, Nightbot. Hey, Nightbot. Ice Bunny! Ice Bunny? Ice Bunny! I, congratulations! Um, I would like to offer you the, um, the, the game, the, the, where are you? Come over here. Uh, yes! Ice Bunny! Hey, Ice Bunny, I would like to, I'm gonna, where are you? There you are. I'm going to message you. I'm going to message you with the code. Uh, was, I told you I was fortunate my friend's mom busted us drinking. Uh, you won. You won um, our the game. Rapture Rejects is the game that you won. And I'm going to send you the code. I'm going to send you the code. And I have, uh, no, it is not horror. It is a battle royale and it's comedic. It is humorous. It is silly. It is a silly, silly game. Um, so this is, I'm sending you the code, and then also I'm sending you two codes because there is also a safari outfit that you can have with this game. So in addition to the game itself, you are also getting a dashing safari outfit. Boom. That is, that is it for you. <laughs> So, okay. Now, all of that said, all of that said, now we are going to play uh, a little bit of, of, uh, you know, where the water tastes like wine. Um, yes. So we're going to talk to this guy and then we're going to wander around and talk to each other some more. The problem with this guy, by the way, is that I don't think that I can... I don't think I have the stories he wants to hear. For a moment when I saw you coming close to the fire... And that's bad. I thought I saw a friend I made in port years ago. This guy scares me, here. by the way. Um, there's something about this guy that creeps me out. Like, he, this, this, this particular character makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, I think it's his haunted eyes. And like the way that like, I don't know, like I'm, he makes me nervous. This character makes me nervous. And I just want you to know that he kind of scares me. And I don't really like being with him alone in front of a fire. I haven't seen him in years. <laughs> Never will again. Uh, yeah, it's the tattoos and the empty eyes. He's got these really empty dead eyes, and it creeps me out. So I miss them blood pounding adventure stories. Thank you. you. like that? I know I do want to know what is. So here's the problem. The problem is that we have not maxed out his eyes, and um, I'll tell him the story of Casey Jones, the fastest railroad in America. I don't know if that will, if that's thrilling, but. I don't, we will see. My blood oh, yes. pumping. That's the kind I used to like as a boy. This is good. Um, so on Monday, my brother's ex-wife tried to ram him and his girlfriend with her car. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Levi, that's terrible. Uh, have you gotten like, has, has your brother gotten a restraining order against this ex-wife has has they have they charged press charges she does not sound stable and she sounds super dangerous she's out already oh oh my gosh oh that is super scary people who are oh um, is it, was there like a restraining order though? Like, because, I mean, it may not help, but. Travel, oof. the real deal. It was a whole different thing. The stories I read as a kid never told me about the fog so thick you can't see the Eiffel Tower or how the rats cover the street in every port. Yeah, okay, well, at least they've got that because I hope, I mean, ooh. So, 
I'm knocking on wood for your brother and his girlfriend and um, the, and the kids because that is, yeah. I'm sending good vibes out. She was still my niece's softball game tonight. Oh, she's a severe alcoholic and won't get help. Yeah, mm, that's bad. Ooh, she sounds abusive. No good, it's no good. Oof. I do not approve. I hope everything turns out okay. But I'd see it all again if I could. Oof. But you tell me, what's the wildest thing you've seen on the roads out here? Anything good and exciting? Yeah, there's a lot of oof. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to tell... One, two, three... Three, four, five, six. Okay, we have enough, I think, to max him out. I think we can do it. I'm so sad for those kids. That's terrible. They're gonna like. Ooh, tell another like that, and you therapy. could ride a good rag. Mm. My home. When I was a kid, home was my daddy on his chair and mama listening to the radio. Like in the heavy, like, you know what else makes this guy seem really creepy? The lighting is from below, and so the way the shadows are falling on, on his face makes him seem really, really creepy. But for a while there, the sea was my home. As welcome as a worn leather seat, it's call sweeter than any music. So, you know. But you tell me, what's the wildest thing you've seen on the roads out here? Anything good and exciting? So I'm not gonna, we have maxed out his eye, so I'm not gonna tell him anything useful. I'm just gonna try to sort of help out some of my stories and learn about them. Like, what about the story of the man who sought to eradicate every trace of his dead enemy, even his horse? Like, that might be good. I mean, I don't know what kind of story it is, but. That's the kind of adventure Ooh. that sticks with you. That's considered an exciting story. Okay. I made my choice. Had a daughter, wife, and home. Mama said I should have stayed with him instead of shipping out. Yeah, he's a he's a merchant marine. He is. I tell you, I'd have ended up in this gutter a lot sooner if I hadn't. Huh. Like, what happened to you, guy? So I miss them blood-pounding adventure stories. You got any like that? Probably not. Um, why don't I tell you the story of... Mm, the cloud tinged with a color no human had seen before. Hmm. When you've seen enough real horror in this world, cheap tales don't do it no more. So apparently that's not thrilling. All right. My wishes. I don't know if they came true. When I read those rags as a kid, imagine seeing distant shores... That was nothing compared to the real deal. I wonder how many people, I mean, we still have merchant marines. I went further and saw more than any of those writers ever did. Anyhow, you got any stories that end looking up? I miss those hopeful ones. Um, yeah, the thing is, I feel like he, in terms of time frame, it feels to me Okay, he tried to, what we know is he tried to sign up for the Navy, but they turned him down because his eyesight wasn't very good. So my thought is that the the Navy he tried, the, the conflict he tried to sign up for, I feel like Korea. So I feel like we are in the 60s right now with him, but it could have been World War II, um, but it could have been Vietnam. But he feels to me later than the other people is what I, what I would say. He feels, he feels later to me. He feels 50s in the, at the earliest, I think. And he does look much older, so it doesn't, it feels to me like we are in a pretty, uh, 60s, 70s, you know? Come on, that can't be true. Sorrow ain't like that. All right.
right. Authority? <laughs> you pegged me right. Never liked being told what to do. Not the way my father dished it. Like, I just don't, I mean, it could have been that he was a merchant marine in the 40s and now it's the 60s, but this is just definitely does not feel like the 1930s is what I would say. But when it comes to the sea, you do what you're told for yourself and your brothers. Yeah, but he, but he didn't go into the Navy, he went to the merchant marine, but he, it was either World War II conflict or later, like, but well, yeah. Time to get going. I'm off this way when the sun rises. So he's heading off east. We're gonna just wander around and chat with each other while we try to find him is what we're gonna do. Because but talking with you, you know, brings it back. The good and the bad. I don't I don't know and how I feel about him. Sticks. I died the day my ship was sunk. I felt alive on that sea with my brothers. You know, and I was doing right by my family, my country. Almost wish I never felt that way. Never knew what I'm missing now. Yeah, this is the thing that the, the the tattoos seem more modern to me in certain ways, but maybe I'll find it here at the bottom of this bottle. Yeah, so he feels he feels more contemporary to me. But Yeah, we are going to head it's a lot of mountains. Let's, uh... Can we go this way? I think we can. So, I don't know about this guy. This Merchant Marine guy, he's not... He feels weird to me. In the sense that a lot of the people are... I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about him, basically. Maybe the writers end up projecting anachronistic ideas onto this character. Well, the thing is, the 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 game itself is vague in terms of time. It seems mostly to be set in the 30s, but there are clearly people who are who are fr not from the 30s here. So time becomes gets a little wibbly wobbly, which is which is fine. Um, I'm not even bothered by that in any way. But there's always a little bit of a like trying to figure out where where in time it's supposed to be is sort of interesting. Uh, he could be a child of the 30s. That's true. If he were a child of the 30s, he could have, the Korean War could have been the conflict that he couldn't get into. And then he would have been like a merchant marine like in the 50s or on the waterfront, right? Marlon Brando. Mm -hmm. Um... So you listen in as the man on the radio finishes a wild story about the man who discovered Pluto. I swear this is what happened, the cop over the radio insists. That's when it clicks you. You know the story, it's a stranger version of the story of the astronomer in the desert, but with some bits left out or replaced. Ain't true, the cop in the truck sighs. If only he knew. So I think we can just uh, finish out our August which makes us productive today. So let's see what we got. I think we should get his final form. Oh. Routes that sunk my ship took most of my side in the blast. Whoa. Mm. Okay, here's what we got. He said Germans, which means that he was a merchant marine in the 40s. So we are clearly in the 50s or 60s right now. There's a, yeah, an albatross. He's crying. This albatross is harpooned to him. Came home, couldn't work. Couldn't read. He did. He did. He said Kraut. And I wonder who's that. Yeah. And there's. Oh, I think the blue hand are his fellow sailors, his failure merchant, his fellow merchant marines. But I could drink. That I could do. Easy as falling off a log. Drowning. Like I think he saw all of his. Yeah. And I could lose my family. 
I could do that too. Ancient Mariner. That's good, Pumpkin. I feel like that's probably the archetype that he's working on. So I miss them blood pounding adventure stories. Yeah, that is some imagery. Not like that. The art in this game is so good, everybody. We are going to use the stories uh, that we have gathered because that's going to be the only way we get through this. We'll tell the story of Jimmy's parable. Yeah, and the rope is around both of their necks, strangling them. It's really intense. My blood's pumping. That's the kind I used to like as a boy. Oof. Faith? You come yes, Falcon. You come into ties telling me to find Faith? No. I had Faith. In this country, I swore an oath to. We're getting some themes here. And the gutter's where my Faith led me. There's a lot of disillusioned people in this game. But you know, the books I miss the most is the hopeful ones. Got any of those? <sighs> I'm gonna tell Fidelina's tale. Oh, leaves a warm feeling in your chest, huh? Hmm. Um, I don't think a lot of hopeful hobos. No, but but what I mean to say, Levi, is that there's a real sort of ongoing running theme of the government letting you down, right? Of like people having sacrificed for the government and then that not going anywhere like this guy here hey axe this guy here but then also our world war one soldier uh we had two world war one people we had two different ones from world war one who were left let down Evan, yes falcon that, that's I was true drinking the night my louisa left didn't notice till two dames and a lick of bottles later Lost in my little slice of heaven. I need to reread that poem. But you tell me, what's the wildest thing you've seen on the roads out here? Anything good and exciting? Huh. Um, tell Althea's blues. We're, we're telling the character stories so we can get this Ooh, one going. Tell another like that and you could write a good rag. Thanks. Traps? Bottles got me. Got me good. But I didn't have a choice. That ship sunk me too. This guy probably has like super intense PTSD. Anyhow, you got any stories that end looking up? I miss those hopeful ones. Hmm. I tell a story of Ray's lament, my friends. Well, that one sure makes me smile. Okay, one more. Freedom. Yeah, I got nothing holding me back now. Just me and the bottle and the road. That's rough, my friend. So I miss them blood pounding adventure stories. You got any like that? This, you know what it reminds me of? Um, it reminds me of... Yeah, I, I'm actually thinking of um, the song me and Bobby McGee, right, as, as sung by Janis Joplin, where this idea of like freedom being basically, freedom is, freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose, right? This kind of real being on the road and, and freedom being basically being at the bottom. That's the kind of adventure pondering. that sticks with you. Yeah, PTSD at the very least of it. This, yeah, so I, I think about, um, does he blame himself for the ship going down? For for surviving? Yeah. Yeah. So many died on that ship. The more ended up like me, forgotten, alone. So that's another theme that's happening through this us? game. People being forgotten, people making sacrifices, but then people forgetting them and nobody caring, and then them being sort of left aside by society. Brothers left me. Wife and kid left me. Country left me. Right, this is a recurring theme. Spend our whole lives living for the future, never realizing that when it comes, we'll have been forgotten. That seems to be another theme of this game. Like, the forgetting stories, right? This whole game is about remembering, yeah. Sorry, mouth is dry from all this talking. And I reckon I got nothing left to say. Thank you, Krellen. Because, and here's the thing, I, mm, yes, I, Krellen, 
I'm pointing to chat, which is where where your comments are. Uh, Krellen, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's, and the thing is that some of the people that we're talking to lie to themselves and also us. Yeah. And we are, we're collecting their stories to remember them. And yeah. So here's what we're gonna do, folks. We are going to find people to talk to. Who are we gonna talk to? We're gonna head out. I think almost everybody we need to talk to is out west some. So let's just head, let's just head out west. Let's see what we can do, who we can get to. Because maybe, we'll, we'll just get a ride. Clouds, I, I can't believe I looked overhead as if that was actually gonna help when that's not even a thing. Come on, give a, a skeleton hobo a ride. You know you want to. These cars are not giving me a ride. Let's see if I just try to get a ride from them. I, I don't want to walk the whole way. Give me a ride. <laughs> I just want to point out that they're not giving me a ride. Would I give a skeleton hobo a ride? It's questionable. There's a, it's questionable. Uh, maybe, because sometimes the devil is not always the bad guy. He has you clipping the stories. Yeah. Give me a ride. I'm going to walk down the road a little bit. I just want to ride across the mountains. Um, I do. Yeah. This. And do you, when you're, if you have eldritch tentacles, give me a ride. See, see that? They didn't give me a ride. When you have Eldritch tentacles, do you show them when you're thumbing a ride? Do you like show your noodly tentacles? Are you like, hey, tentacles? Ooh, hey, thanks. I got a ride. Um, they're gonna ship me off that way. Uh, and then we, at least we can uh, get, by the way, don't let me forget. If, if you have tentacles, totally show them. Um, does the skeleton hobo look like Terry Pratchett's character, Death? And do they speak in all capital letters? Mm -hmm. You flash them in a rearview mirror a couple of times. You hear an unbelievable tale of a giant skeleton hobo chasing after tiny cars for a ride. Can you believe it? Hmm. Maybe? Maybe? I could buy it. I, I could buy it. They're going to let me off here. Which is fine. I, I think I'm doing... I feel like, hey, despite the fact that we spent a lot of time talking about stuff, we were still super productive today. Uh, there's a bus stop with an old man. I'll read this one out. You share this bus stop with an old man who shifts from foot to foot, thumbing his suspenders and watching the passing traffic with anxious, anxious focus. Hey, he blurts suddenly, turning towards you. You want to hear a good story? Uh, sure. Well, the tentacles are a bigger thumb, <laughs> easier to see for the drivers who to know you want to ride. I think that's true. Plus, I I wonder if I would just pick up someone with tentacles just to find out what that's about. With the air of a man who's distracting himself from something, he stumbles quickly through a tale about a man who swam into the ocean to escape his troubles, confusing himself now and again, backtracking and adding new details out, out of order. You barely piece the story together. You suddenly realize that he's told you a twisted version of the story about the man on the beach in Miami despairing for the future, plus two. But massively changed, uh, with whole new chunks you don't remember. It's true, the old man insists, turning his wincing eyes back toward the road. And with that, the conversation seems over. Yeah, I feel like all the drivers are secretly into hentai, and so everyone really, really wants those tentacles. Let's kick this ride. Uh, consenticles, consenticles! That's the best word ever. I I am enjoying just taking a taking a car out this way so I get to hang out with you. I think we're going the right way, right? Yes, consenticles. I I think it's the best word, and I hope that everybody appreciates consenticles as a word all the time. Uh, <laughs> um. I love that. 
if, you know, there's a game that Aneo has played and I have played it. It's called Illimat. I recommend it. It is uh, a card game, like playing cards, uh, but a special set of playing cards. It's a very weird game. It's made by Keith Baker, the game designer. Consenticles. Um, and it is... It is... It will... The band, the Decemberists, basically made a fake game that they would play on the cover of their albums, and then they wanted somebody to make it as a real game, and this was the real game. It is so weird, but it's really fun, and I'm excited for it. And thanks to Aneo, I know that there is a session of it at Gen Con, so now I have to go and see if I can get into that place. It's really interesting. It's, it's a weird game, but I like it. I like it. If you like card games, a tiny motormouth is eagerly sharing the details of a strange tale with her brother as they loiter outside the store. The boy listens raptly, eyes growing larger, mouth hanging open like a fish. She's telling him about the strange color from outer space. You try to hide your surprise. It's the story of the cloud, tinged with a color no human had seen before. The vision the girl, the version the girl must have heard is embellished, to say the least. But hey, it's a good story. All right. So we have got where are we and where is the closest person that whose story we need to tell i watched Stephen and lauren play that once and i'm pretty sure everyone was mad at each other but the game looked pretty uh, all hail the glow cloud oh i think there's someone over there maybe let's see map we are here and it looks like we need to find people where hmm there's a clown that's weird uh it looks like if we can get down to nevada we can find some people so let's see we want to head um that way south and west it looks like i think we can probably just walk to nevada we're gonna do it yeah. I don't... I'm going to tell you, this Gen Con is going to be really weird for me. Uh, this will be my fourth time going to Gen Con in my life. I only started going once I moved out to the East Coast. And before, I've always gone primarily to play the Game of Thrones tournament. That's what I, you know, went there for. And... I can't do that this year because the Game of Thrones tournament was always on Fridays. And so you would go and play it on Fridays. That's what you did. And, um, oh, maybe a horse auction. A well-dressed man waves you over. Making some big deals today, he brags, fingering a bill where you can see. Give me what number 60 goes up, okay? You stand in the crowd and wait, then run back to fetch him. He pays you absurdly well for doing almost nothing at all. Ooh, fajitas. Mmm, fajitas. Let's, let's just head over here. We're very close. New music. So, yeah, I was saying that normally it's, uh, every year it's on Friday, and so I organized to, to GM Clockwork Dominion on Thursdays and Saturdays so that I could do um, Game of Thrones on Friday, and then without any kind of warning, they put Game of Thrones on Thursday. So now I'm going to be going to Gen Con and not be playing Game of Thrones for the first time, and that's weird. That's weird. Also, I want fajitas. Just, just noting it. Fajitas. Reno. I, I have family in Reno. Side note. I know. Uh, I know this guy. Um, he launches into a wild story about the legend of Casey Jones. Halfway through, he stops, recognizing the look on your face. You know this one? You tell him the story about Casey Jones, the fastest railroader in America. Ooh. Uh, I, you know what? I don't care what the fajitas are about. I just want some fajitas. They're delish. Let's, uh, let's talk to this person. Who is it? Who? Oh, hey, new color. Uh, meetup? 
I want to know all about it. Let me let me know what, what we're talking about. I'm I'm excited. What are we looking at, everybody? We're looking at. I don't know who we're looking at. We're gonna find out. We are gonna be talking to Rose. Oh, I think Rose is our hippie. Yeah, it's oh, our hippie. Hey. Groovy to see you again. I guess I spilled it all about my childhood last time we talked. <laughs> this this may this may be fair. This may be fair, Krellen. Um, so we've got a hippie. We're gonna find out what she likes. If you wanna hear about the good old days and the hate, I can tell you something about that maybe. But I want a good story and trade. I feel like since she's talking about the good old days in the hate, in the height of the Summer of Love, where, which is like Summer of Love was 67. Monterey Pop was like, right, so we're looking at 69, 66, 67. So I imagine we're in the 70s, uh, maybe into the 80s is right. Tell me details. Oh, that's fair. So, you got any really, really wild ones? Anything exciting and strange? I do have wild stories. I will tell you the story about Casey Jones. Season 8 is like an RPG campaign's last session. Yeah, it's a totally wild story. Where the demon's moving away <laughs> and is trying to wrap up all the storylines in three hours. Mm -mm. Yeah, you know, it's funny, Volpez, because I have... Twitter is, like, enraged. They're like, it's the worst thing in the world! That's Twitter. But I have friends who are watching it who are not who are not Twitter people, and they're like, no, no, it's totally fine. Uh, and they're, they're enjoying it, so I will find out what I think when I actually watch it. Taking trips. Sometimes later. <sighs> they used to trip on acid, that was the thing. The tests and Keezy and Leary and pretty much everyone was traveling the outer edges of the universe. Hmm. When I got there, it was trips down deep, dark holes. Hills and horse and all the downers. Hmm. Um, Danny's been saying she was going to win the Seven Kings with both. She has been saying that since the beginning. It is true. HP was apparently willing to go 10 seasons with the writers were like, fuck no, in this mess. Uh, the aesthetic I'm seeing art environmentally seems to suggest late 70s. Yeah, Axe, I think that's true. Late 70s is, feels right to me. People are crashing from the highs of the 60s and 70s, but the glam and abuse of shiny of the 80s isn't emerging yet. Yeah, I, I totally am with you on that one, Axe. That's what I think too. That it, yeah, it feels like late, late, late 70s. As someone who hasn't seen any Game of Thrones, I'm just sitting with my popcorn and watching people lose it over the last season. You know, can I just say something um, about, again, please note, I've, I've not watched the last season, but people are like, oh no, you know, why didn't they just, they should just make more seasons and like, totally HBO would have let them do it and, and like, they're just being like, selfish? I don't know. Um, but here's the thing, everyone's blaming the showrunners for not doing more seasons. Um, it's been 10 years, and I imagine that the actors have contracts that are up. And I imagine getting the ability to renew those contracts might be difficult. And uh, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. And I also imagine that some of those actors probably don't want to renew their contracts because they want to do movies. And they want to maybe not be on three different continents all the time and filming like year round. Um, it feels rushed. Some of the stories are unsatisfyingly ultimately, but they've been adding people's, editing people's stories uh, unsatisfied for seven seasons. Yeah, see, this is... Uh, oh, oh, you're trying to escape it. Please don't, I've not, I've not watched the season, so everything's gonna be a little bit vague and generic because I've not seen it. Um, yeah, so I, I just... Um, I just imagine that a number of the actors are like, we want to go. Like, I imagine that is, uh, I imagine that's going on, is all oh. I'm saying. Got any good hopeful stories? Hopeful, so you like about what the world should be. exciting and hopeful. We'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. Uh, you want some hopeful story, right? Um, I think I have got, um, the story of the man who discovered Pluto. That's pretty hopeful. Uh, Ify oh, that's a good one. may or may not you watch via pirate streams. I'm not caught up though. My family jokes that whenever someone dies in the TV show, they ask for a raise. Oh, hey, can I tell you something? Um, I'm gonna tell you something. Um, 
which I think this is not about Game of Thrones. Don't worry, Effie. If you see an interview with Dinklage, his face just screams, why the hell have they been murdered me yet? Please, somebody murder me. <laughs> um, so I'm going to tell you something that I found out, which is so interesting to me, and I'm not distracting myself from, from ga playing, playing the game. Um, by the way, I have a new light. I have a new light that uh, you can't see it, but there's a new light that I have, um, and I can change the um, color of it so I can make it more, oops, this color, or I can make it more um, sunny, like color temperature, but I thought this was better. Um, and I can change the brightness. I got a new light. It's a, it was a cheap a desk lamp. I got a cheap desk lamp with an LED panel desk lamp. That's what I got. Um, so, oh, so here's what I want to tell you. I'm getting distracted. It's it's Krellen's fault. It probably isn't Krellen's fault, but I'm sure he would like to take the credit for distracting me. Um, so soap operas, daytime soaps, you know, they, they, they air year round. Um, and m the soaps... Uh, but not the YT, uh, YT, YT, young, tough, youth, um, yellow, uh, I do like the hippie girl too, I like her. Oh, so, soap operas, daytime soaps, um, they would film an, uh, an hour episode a day, they have to, oh, thank you. I was like, young, that's YA, young adult, young turtle. Um, uh, so, um, they would film an episode, an episode a day. Now, most of the soaps would film an episode and a quarter a day, so they would get some kind of, um, like, they'd get a little bit of a backlog so that people could take vacation. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I know, um, young turtle nonsense, and, but, um, General Hospital wouldn't do that. They'd only do one episode. They do one episode a day, so they all they never stopped filming. So basically, there was no vacation. So the only way you got vacation on General Hospital is if your character was not around for some reason. So, for example, and if you were like a major character, like Susan Lucci's Erica Kane, she's always there, so she never gets vacation. So the only way you would get vacation. Um, is if your character were put in a coma or went off to Europe for something or like, so basically why people would end up being in comas and what else, because they wanted their, they, they wanted to be able to have some kind of vacation. Um, and so, uh, and so I, I thought that was really interesting that apparently that's one of the reasons why daytime soaps would have things like comas and whatnot was so that the actors could have some time off. Water. So there you go. That was a bit of detail. Oh, yeah. I Sometimes I think people complaining about the TV show may not... I don't know if they've read the books. So, um... Let's see. Past. It was come and gone, and it was still all anyone could talk about. I wonder what her true form looks like. I met a lot of people who had lived it. Those memories of that time shone bright and colorful like the summer sky. Yeah, I, there. I will tell you, just side note, there are some things I think the TV show does better than the books. Just side note. That's all I'm going to say. Some things... The book does better, but books and TV shows are not the same medium. Do you know what I mean? You can't do the same things in a TV show that you can do in books and vice versa. And some things are just better in the TV show and some things are better than the books or work better. You know, I read the books. I found watching the show I don't really need. <laughs> First off, drummer boy, I, I see your Culture Club reference. Um, comma, 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 convenience. You come and go, you come and go. Yeah. Um, and the books, if you have not read the, the Song of Ice and Fire books, the Game of Thrones books, there are many passages where you get three to four pages of description of food. That happens quite a lot in those books if you have not read them. I'm just telling you, there are a lot of descriptions of foods. A lot of descriptions of foods. Um... That's all I'm saying. Again, being a person of visuals, I just appreciate the production of some of the actors, yeah. Um, yeah, it takes three pages to describe a thing that is covered in a 30 second shot of good set design. Yeah, but also um, the thing is, and this is just, I'm here, we're gonna do more rows, just side note, but here's the thing I'm gonna tell you. I have a, um, a 
an observation. People may disagree with this observation and that is fine because it's not like a core part of my identity. We can talk about it. Um, I think that, and RPGs, thank you, Axe. Um, RPGs do some things better than books. Radio does some things better than films. Like, you know, like each medium has its own, um, its own strengths and weaknesses. And I feel like leaning into this good. So I was going to tell you something. Um, wait. Yes, that's what it was. Okay. So this is the thing I'm going to say, and this is just my, right? I feel like authors, when they get more famous, the book publisher is less likely to edit them because they're famous now, right? So I think about the ways in which um, Game of Thrones, the first book uh, in the Song of Ice and Fire series, is actually, it's not that long of a book. I mean, like, it's it's a good lengthy book, but it's not, like, super big. But the last one, Dance with Dragons, is like 700 pages. And I just feel like the books just keep getting longer and longer and have longer and longer descriptions of food because nobody wants to tell George Martin to edit his stuff. Whereas in the beginning of the series, the book will be, like, the series, the publishers will be like, edit that stuff down, cut, cut, cut. And then you've got to edit it down. But then the more, the more, the bigger you get as an author, the less likely people are to say that to you. And I think people, I think people would say the same thing about J.K. Rowling, maybe also Stephen King, and uh, I just feel like maybe that's not always a good thing that you're not getting edited by your publishers. That's all. That is all. Um, I'm reading through Dune right now, and I have no idea how they're going to convey the thought process in the movie. Mm. If it's at least if it's a whole chapter, I can just skip it. Uh, lots of tedious voiceovers. Maudib, my name is a killing word. That was my voiceover. Um, David Lynch film from the 80s, my friend. Oh, I should I should check out the sci-fi miniseries. He should know better, but I think sometimes people don't do a good job of it, you know? Yeah. Pay by the word. Uh, grrr, Martin. Yeah, so I, I think that that's all, right? I think that sometimes maybe there's a bit of a problem and I... And, um, and I will say this, I will just say this. I know that there are those people who are like, you're an artist, man. Don't let anybody tell you what to do, man. But guess what? Editors are good. That's all I'm saying. Uh. <laughs> I need to make that your ringtone. Maudib, my name is a killing word. Just make it your ringtone and I think it'll be really excellent. And then I don't know who would be saying it, but I like it. That's it. Grr, Martin. Oh yeah, the mutant in me ghoul. Grr, Martin. <laughs> I love it. That was almost worse than never knowing it was real. You know, I'd love to hear a really good scary story. Oh, scary stories? I I have got scary stories, Rose. Like I can give you a scary story. Like I can do that. Um, David Lynch tried so very hard uh, with the full-length film, but he tried to be too faithful to the book and felt he had to explain way too much to immerse the audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this is a good point, Axe. I saw a book that he was an editor of, and his name was huge, and the author's name wasn't, uh, wasn't on the dust jacket. Ouch. That might not have been him, though. That might have been his publisher. Um... I need Trooper to do record some books on tape. Ooh, I, I should probably do that. Or I should do some reading streams. Um, I do, you know what I wanna do? I wanna do a reading stream of one of my favorite bad books, um, Atlanta Nights. Do you know, do you know the book? Do you know the book, Atlanta Nights? Do you know it? Do you know it? Do you know it? Do you know the book? Do you know it? Do you know it? Uh, there's a book called Atlanta Nights that I would love to do a Trooper Reads stream of. And Primate, oh, that's good. So here's what happened. And I, I know that I'm being distracted, but I'm gonna come back to Rose. Um, so what happened was there was a publishing house, whose name I do not remember, who sent out a call for books for manuscripts. And the call was something like this. We are this reputable and really fancy and really excellent publisher, and we only want the most high quality of manuscripts. Uh, so please send us your manuscripts, but no sci-fi or fantasy, because sci-fi fantasy is all crap and we only want really high quality things. And a bunch of sci-fi and fantasy authors read this, were offended, but also suspected that the publishing house was a, um, 
what's the word was a um shenanigans what, what do you call it um um it was a uh front front yeah like basically it was it was there to steal money from people do you know what i mean like it was uh it was like a it was a it, you know, basically it was like a, a racket, you know what I mean? So what they did, there was like maybe like 14 of them or something like this, like 14 to 20 of these authors. So what they did was scam. Thank you, scam is the word. Scam is the word that I was thinking of. Where they would like accept your manuscript and then ask you to pay money for it. So like a scam. So what they did is they all got together and they wrote the worst book they could imagine. Uh, that was, of course, not sci-fi or fantasy. They tried to write this, this a really, really bad book. So they wrote a book called Atlanta Nights. Uh, and they had a whole process to write this book. So each author would write two chapters. Um, the person who was organizing it put together a set of characters. And then the and like, like a setting, like a, you know, like a set of characters setting and then said, OK, write your chapters. But they did not tell them where in the book the chapter would go like if it would be in the beginning, middle or end, or what the plot necessarily was. Um, I remember there was might've been like a kind of a, a quasi plot. Yes, Levi, what are those kind of things where like give us money and be published? A flim flam. And so they have this book that Atlanta Nights, which one chapter is repeated twice, complete like the same chapter happens twice in the book. Uh, another chapter was generated by machine language. Um, the spelling errors are epic. The writing is is astounding. And they wrote this terrible, terrible book. They submitted it to this press. It's a bamboozle. And um, the book got accepted. Uh, and they were like, your book is amazing. Of course, we will publish your book. And so then the authors um, exposed them and said, look, look, look what happened. So the press was like, oh, we take back the contract offer. Anyway, they published the book under, uh, through Lulu or whatever that place is, that, that place that that's like print to order books. Um, the book is amazing. The book is amazing. Like, <laughs> it's so good. Like, it's such a bad book, but it's, but it's bad in a way that they meant to do it. And it's, uh, it's so well done. It's such a good book. Lulu, that's the one. It's Lulu that they, where they did it. Um, and then they made a show, an HBO show called Game of Thrones. Um, you have, like, I want to get the book, um, and then I want to read it because it's, uh, it's amazing. So I, I am a big fan of this book. And, uh, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a bad good, but it's done on purpose. So it's not like, you don't, you're not, it's, you don't make, you know, they're not being made fun of. Do you know what I mean? So I, I should, I feel like I should do a stream where I, once this summer happens, I'll have more time. So maybe I'll do a stream where I read Atlanta Nights because it's, it's epically amazing. It's, it's, it's good. It's really good. It's such a weird thing. It's so good. Oh yeah. And you get the trend and a Neo, a Neo knows it. A Neo has read it. Um, it's, it's, uh, wow. Let's tell the story of the haunted mill. Yeah, and you know it's a joke, right? And, and like you and you could, you could read it in random chapter order, and it's so weird because you're like, oh, what's the plot? And there's a character, um, Isidore, who's a man, and then is then is a woman in a different chapter. Um, like it's just, uh, uh, okay. I will, I will, if I can un find it when I unpack, I will maybe oh, do a man. That's really good. Atlanta night stream Pretty because scary. I mean, because I mean, it's amazing. I still found family there. They were hippies still around, or others like me who wanted to be. So good. We held on to each other for dear life, and they were some of the best family I ever had. The Atlanta Knights, because, and I just, oh, Atlanta Knights, and there's so many moments where it's like, um, like Bruce Lucent. Uh, Bruce Lucent is like one of the main characters, sort of, as far as somebody can be a main character in that book. And he's like a businessman, you know, really successful businessman. And like there's, there's like a scene where he's going to like a, a board meeting and the person describing it clearly does not know what a board meeting is like. And um, <laughs> so like, and there, you know, he, they talk about business. And like, it's just, it's just really good. It's really good. Oh, it's really good. So anyway, got any good ghost stories? Anything scary or weird? I do have those things, but I have maxed out your eye, so I do not need to tell them to you. Ugh. 
let's tell the story of the child asking people to dance for money, because I don't really know what to do with that one. Huh. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it either. And luck did have everything to do with it. That's yet. all. Maybe it was the only time that could have <laughs> Business, it happened in. Stars aligned just right. <sighs> but I have to believe it's possible. That we can all get along and love one another. <laughs> it wasn't just luck. <laughs> Drummer Boy, it's like that, where you're like, and then the, then it was like hard negotiations for the business. And it like, and you, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. So I would just say I should probably do a stream because Atlanta Nights is just the best thing. It's so bad. And, uh, you know, I just, I just wonder about the legalities of reading streams. But if I tell everyone to get it, then that's, you know, advertising. You know, I'd love to hear a really good, scary story. I'm not going to tell you any more stories because any good stories, because we're already, we're already good. Synergy. Right. Just tell people to get their stuff. Um, how about the story of the mysterious woman preaching the gospel? I don't know if that's a. Uh... Oh, come on. That shit's so fake. I think that might be hopeful. Talking about faith. Mm. Yeah, it was supposed to be a place of trust. <laughs> Synergy! It Third quarter projections! Be, they tell me. It is not open source. It was a place where they'd find you a couch to crash on. Yeah, but I was thinking that uh, Anna Geeks was reading The Hobbit, and which is not public domain, so I'm not quite certain what Just some of those rules are. And strangers, so much faith in each other and the things they believe. A few years later, none of that was left. Mm. I hope that was an interesting story. I don't have a lot of people ask me about what the hate was like. Maybe they feel like they know from the news, but they don't. I bet you have a lot of stories like that. It's true. So you're going to have to tell them to me next time, okay? Okay. Where are you heading next? I'm catching a ride this way. Look for me, all right? You're heading north to Idaho? All right, we can do that. So we just finished... Okay, we just finished chapter two with her, um, which means we still have two more chapters left to go, three and four. Um, Blue Jay read the original Frankenstein stream, I think, or something public domain. Yeah, repeat, whatever the fat female secretary said at the break room, everyone laughed, but now a man says it and it's genius. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, the, the book's a piece of work. Well, maybe I could just write the author and ask if I'm allowed to read it out loud. I could do that, maybe. Um, yeah, it's a bit of... I don't know. Because you're not allowed to do plays without getting permission. So maybe I could find Travis T. Travis T is the author, but it's not the author's real name. And see if I can get permission to read it on stream. I should just maybe do that. Because... Right? Um... So, the, so uh, it's break time at this half-finished bridge. The workers are gathered around a young man who sits on a bucket like a king. Then they listen raptly to his story about the labor war all across the West Coast. Um, you realize it's the story of the maritime strikers murdered by the police, but heavily embellished. The young man on the bucket tells it masterfully, doing all the voices as if he's told it this way a thousand times before. Uh, <laughs> too real. Too real. I see you over there. I want the Black Riders on stream now. Mm. It's nothing close to what actually happened, but this version is pretty good. You'll have an easy time remembering it. So, here's where we're at. We could, it's like it's nine-ish. I think, well, Reading a passage is one thing, but actually reading the whole thing is a different. And even if you're not making, even if you're not making money, it doesn't necessarily matter because they will get you. Um, and that's the tricky thing about fair use. They, uh, people are tricky about those things. <laughs> it's crunch time. Go home. Spend time with your families. Why are you giving us fiction? Um, I think what I might do is see if I can find the authors and just uh, email them and ask them if I can read their book on stream. Because they might say yes, and if I can, then I can read it. And that'll be like a, you know, a thing. Um, that, that'd be nice. So what? I'm, here's what I'm going to do, everybody. 
I am going to move us to where Rose is for the next chapter of her story. And then I'm going to call it for the evening. What if we gave our workers a few days of extra paid holidays uh, since we're doing so well this quarter? Why are y'all making up fantasy stories? Like, what is this? What is all this fantasy that is has no uh, bearing on the real world at all in any way? That's true. Oh, my pleasure, Ms. Sue. I, I love it. We're going back to Boise. Going back to Boise. To Boise. To Boise. We're going back to Boise. I don't think so. They'll sue you with the business gun for reading the board meeting out loud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is what I think we'll do. I think I'm going to see if I can find whoever the real people are behind Atlanta Nights and send them an email and see if I can read it on stream because it's the summer and, and I can, you know, maybe do like a, a Monday reading stream. <laughs> Yo, I don't think so. Cause that would be nice. All right, here's what, here's what, we're gonna find out what the story is. Story. A tiny motor mouth, we, we know this one. She's telling him about the tyrannical farmer whose son killed himself in the grain silo. You try to hide your, hide your surprise. It's the story of the dead boy in the grain silo. This version the girl must have heard is embellished to say the least, but hey, it's a good story. We'll call it Georgia Twilight. I feel like Georgia Twilight is gonna have vampires in it. Uh, who doesn't love ladies love cool James? Yes, yes, ladies love cool James, my friends. Here, let's go here. Okay, it is like 9-11 and I have got to get, I've got to order food from Grubhub so I do not starve and so I can take my anti-inflammatory for my wrist. So I want to thank you all for being here. You all have been so lovely. Um, I know on my calendar it says I'm not streaming on Saturday, but I am streaming on Saturday and I'm going to fix it because I cannot go to the Game of Thrones tournament because I cannot shuffle cards. Uh, so I will be here streaming Horizon Zero Dawn on Saturday. Um, and so I will at 10 o'clock be hosting Geek Space TV, their show, A Manner of Speaking. So if you want to watch, uh, catch me over on Geek Space where I'll be modding uh, Manner of Speaking. And I think Sal might be hosting uh, Critical Role in case you want to watch that. Oh, I need to go to the, gro I need to grocery shop. Drummer boy, I have to go grocery shopping so bad. And I will do that, I don't know when. I also have to do laundry uh, because I'm running out of underwear. Because I don't know about you all, but I do laundry when I need underwear. Like, that's that's the sign of doing laundry. Like, do I need more underwear? Do laundry. So I need to do laundry, and uh, I need to get groceries. That's what I have to do. Yeah, so I will be streaming on Saturday. Um, I will be hosting. I will be, like, go and watch Geek Space TV and Manor Speaking tonight, if you are so inclined. And um, guess what, everybody? I am coming to the end of the semester. End of the semester is on Sunday, Sunday people. And then you and I, we're doing all this stuff. And I have made, I, <laughs> Volpes, sometimes I just buy new underwear. This is true. Jim Tam Laundry Mechanics. I'm just saying, it says right here, uh, you can't read it, my handwriting's really bad. Uh, a manner of speaking, Jersey Shore. That's what it says. A manner of speaking, Jersey Shore. It's right there. And then also right here, Atlanta Nights. So we've got we've got plans that we've got to deal with. So thank you everyone. I'm going to um, do the Grubhub right now and then also message Lauren about the Jersey Shore. This is a thing that I want to do. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, thank you for being here. I have a Discord if you want to join me there. And I also, here's my Discord, Discord, typing is not easy. I also have a Twitter, if you wanna catch me on Twitter, uh, where I don't talk about Game of Thrones because I'm not watching it right now. And also uh, you can see the archive of our shows on YouTube. That's what I got going on, my friends. So that's it for me. I wanna thank you all for being here. Every single one of you is amazing and I appreciate it. And I will let you know when I get news about the French Resistance show, um, when, we fi when I find out what channel that's gonna be on and how that's gonna work out. When I get news, I will tell you, but it's gonna happen. So thank you all for being wonderful. 
and I will catch you all on the flip side. Take care, everybody. Take care. I think I'm, well, that didn't work. Here, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, and now. Okay, take care, everybody. Good night.